All right. Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please join us, invite your friends. Um, and if you have Facebook, if you don't mind, please post the link for our video on Facebook, Twitter, or any other website. Uh, today, our topic is about Erdogan and other examples of Muslims considering those Muslim leaders as kuffar, and even some of them consider them to be converted to Christianity. Lately, uh, the Muslims start talking about Erdogan, that obviously he become a Christian, and he is the enemy of Allah, and he is not a Muslim. And one of the most famous sheikhs for the Muslim in the world, his name is Sheikh al Maqdisi, and he is, let us say, the guideline for Al Qaeda too, and the majority of the Muslims in the world. He announced that Erdogan is an ex Muslim and he is a Kafir, and that Muslim should wage jihad, jihad against him. And in another way, you know, he is saying that any Muslim he can. Uh, or, you know get his hand on him or you know assassinate him he should do that so this is the mentality of the Muslims about someone like Erdogan but how Erdogan became in the eyes of Muslims a Kafir Christian infidel uh, enemy how this happened you know if you watch in the news and if you watch many of those Western media, they keep saying to you that ISIS are not Muslims and the easiest way to prove it, that those people, they kill Muslims. So that because they kill Muslims, that means they are not Muslims. But because they are ignorant, do not know that in Islam, if you don't follow certain uh, 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 like rules in Islam, if you don't practice certain rules in Islam, you are not a Muslim. You are simply an enemy to Allah. And this is the only rule Islam work with when it's come to do and practice their religion with anyone. Which means, why you are an enemy to Allah? Because you don't pray to Allah, you don't believe in Muhammad, you don't pay zakat, you don't etc. So you are an enemy to Allah. Now, if you are a Muslim by name or by birth, but you don't do any of those things, still for them you are the same as the Christian the same as the Jew, the same as the Hindu. Now, Erdogan, supposedly, he is a person who prays five times a day. So how Erdogan became or become a Kafir? Very simple. You see, the Muslims, through history, and let me open the screen for you, through their history, nothing changed. In the Middle East, we say, if you put the frame of a dog, of a, of a tail of a dog, in the frame for a thousand years, and you take the frame off, you try to straight out the tail of the dog, put it in a frame for a thousand years, the day you take the frame off, the tail will not be straight no more. So the Muslims, they try to straight each other by using violence. And in order for you to survive between Muslims, you have to claim to be a Muslim. Otherwise, you will not survive it. So what do you do? You bring their frame and you put it in your tail. Let us say you are the fox, you are the smart one who have a tail, nice tail. But the Muslim believe anyone who have a tail is not straight should be killed. So what do you do? You need to frame, you need to frame your tail and the, the only framework is their frame. The second you stop using their frame, you are not one of them, for your tail is not straight. In other way, your tail is not Islamic. And if your tail is not Islamic, well, then the solution is very easy. They are going to kill you, and they will announce jihad against you. Erdogan, he himself, he play the game of the tail with the Muslims. Erdogan, when he wants, he's a Muslim. He's a good believer. He read Quran, he recite Quran, he mention Allah each time he want to talk, make a speech. But this guy, he do nothing in his country 
anything have to do with Islam as an example if you go right now and search in YouTube about nightclubs in Turkey you will find endless numbers of nightclubs women in Turkey almost they are really they don't you know I don't I, I remember when I was in school in England we used to have two Turkish women used to come to our class and the second they enter our class our class usually have 13 14 people only but the second we have those two ladies they are young I'm talking about ladies but they are young our class is like 30 sometimes 40 uh, even the teacher he don't even dare to look at them because what they are wearing is extremely nothing and you can use your imagination so if you go to Turkey after 15 16 years of Erdogan Islamic party ruling this country what in Turkey now is Islamic nothing it is zero Islamic the only thing about it is Islamic the president he have a wife she wear hijab and he allowed the Muslims in Turkey to wear hijab that's all otherwise there's nothing in Turkey Islamic the Muslim they understand that very well this guy he don't want Islam in Turkey he speak too much about Islam but he don't want Islam so what he want this guy simply is an odd man student which mean he is from the school of the Ottoman people who they are the nationalists of Turkey who they want to build or rebuild the empire of the Ottoman the Ottoman who they can you know who, who control the Arab who control the Muslims who control even Europe if they can they have a dream to accomplish and how we accomplish the dream that is not important Erdogan he's a Muslim so he can get the support of the Muslims at the same time he's in the NATO now the NATO is not here is really his his, his idea uh, Turkey is part of the NATO before Erdogan and after Erdogan but the question is why Turkey is part of the NATO after Erdogan if he is an Islamic leader who don't believe in secularism and he don't believe in anything against Islam how you can be part of the NATO and you are a Muslim that was accepted in the time of uh, the secular regime before Erdogan they are atheists that makes sense but you are a Muslim leader and yet you are part of the NATO and you stay in the NATO many Muslim they consider this behavior as nothing but taqiyya and we spoke about taqiyya before so Erdogan his country is bankrupt if you remember a few years ago almost Turkey went bankrupt totally and the only one saved them it was the stupid American as usual they flood Turkey with money and investment to save Turkey and they were able to save the economy until now now the economy is collapsing again and the Turkish lira almost have no value and soon the same size of a Turkish lira will not buy the same size of a toilet paper Erdogan he cannot survive and he need to practice taqiyya in order to survive taqiyya he used taqiyya in two sides you see taqiyya have two faces if you go in the Quran let us go to the Quran and you will see that Muhammad he taught taqiyya but his followers they practice taqiyya even before he mentioned it and the Quran speak about that Let me show you the situation of Erdogan all right in the front of us here we will see some verses speaking about the Muslim practicing taqiyya but in this case practicing taqiyya 
ود محمد براكس انتقية ود محمد in order to survive so they will not die Muhammad he sent a clear message to the Arabian people in chapter 48 verse number 16 saying that Allah told me to say to you if you don't convert to Islam and you join me in jihad to kill the enemies of the Allah which mean my enemy I will kill you all say to the desert Arab who lagged behind but what lagged behind me they will not join Muhammad to do jihad and they will not join him in Islam or even some of them they converted to Islam but they don't want to practice Islam to do jihad so Muhammad he sent him a warning claiming that this is a warning from Allah Aka Muhammad he said you shall be someone to fight against a people given like a mighty war power blah 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 then you shall fight or you shall surrender you shall fight or surrender you see here they translate the word uh, uh, submit submit does not exist in the verse it says either you fight or you convert to Islam which means you surrender so Muhammad he made it clear I have no two solutions for you either you surrender to me and you announce me as a prophet and you join my army or I'm going to kill you all so now the Arab they have to come with a solution Muhammad he made it clear either you surrender to me or I'm going to slaughter you tribes and individuals with no mercy so what we should do the only way to survive someone like Muhammad is to surrender which mean to convert to Islam you see it say into those of the wandering Arabs who were left behind you will be called against a folk of mighty powers bros to fight them until they surrender and if they obey Allah give you a fair reward so if you obey and you join me in Islam I will not kill you now the Arab they notice that we cannot match with the army of Muhammad. They are a bunch of criminals, outlaw. And we better play taqiyya. And this, in this case here, taqiyya is not an Islamic taqiyya. This is a taqiyya before Islam. But now they practice taqiyya and Muhammad, he got them busted. He knew that they are practicing taqiyya. How we know that? If we go just the second chapter after that, chapter 49, verse number 14. It says, Muhammad is speaking to the Arab. The desert Arab say, we believe. Say, okay, who is, who's saying say? Allah is saying to Muhammad. To tell the Arab supposedly. And when we say Allah is saying to Muhammad, this is Muhammad himself. Saying to Muhammad or Qatham. His real name. So the Arab they say, we believe. Okay. Tell them, you have no faith, but ye only say, we have surrender to Islam. We became a Muslim, actually. Here the word is Muslim. We became Muslims. So don't say we believe, say we, we became Muslims. Okay, well, hold on, hold on. Don't say we believe, say we became Muslims. What does that mean? What Muhammad is saying to those Arab, don't play taqiyya with me. I am the founder of taqiyya. I am the, 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 the master of taqiyya. I know you don't believe in me. I know you think I am a false man. I know that you believe that I am nothing but a scam. I know, I know, and I say to you, I am not a stupid. I know that you have no faith. All what you did, you say we became Muslims. Okay, you are Muslims, but you are not a believer. And Muhammad explained to the Arab more, he says, for not yet has faith entered your hearts. Okay, how they became Muslims again? How those Arab became Muslims if faith did not enter their heart? Any Muslim have an answer? 
Anyone? How do Muslims enter the faith? I mean, enter Islam. They surrender to Islam, but they don't have faith in Islam. How somebody became a Muslim, but he don't believe in Islam? That is impossible. No, it is possible, my friend. It is taqiyya. This is the taqiyya from those who converted to Islam, against Islam. You see, the taqiyya, as I said, it have two faces. The face where Muslim, they can play taqiyya against you as non-Muslim. And this is what Erdogan he do with America. And this is what the Prince of Qatar he do with America. Like in Qatar, the Prince of Qatar is the best friend for Al-Qaeda. In the same time, he is the best friend to America. Like how that can be? How Al Jazeera TV is the official TV station for Al-Qaeda and ISIS? How Al Jazeera TV, they spend one week. I am the one who closed Al Jazeera TV, me. There was a station, it's called Al Jazeera TV Mubashir, which means life. The day USA announced that they killed Osama bin Laden, Al Jazeera TV immediately, they open an air program to receive phone calls from Muslims around the world to praise the hero, the, the majestic hero, the amazing murder, Osama bin Laden. I recorded, I am the one who sent that to the FBI and every department in the state, you name it. In less than 48 hours, Al Jazeera Mubashar was closed. And people, they said to me, "You, what you can do about it? I mean, they, they will not listen to you. No, I did. And it was closed. They shut it down immediately. And now actually this TV station is not exist no more. Even Al Jazeera themselves, they stopped doing that program. So Al Jazeera TV speak against America 24 hours, seven days a week. But less than one mile away, there is the biggest American base in the world, not only in the Middle East. And this American base have electricity free, paid by the Prince of Qatar. The land free, paid by the Prince of Qatar. The garbage free, paid, paid by the Prince of Qatar. The water free paid by the Prince of Qatar. How the Prince of Qatar is the best friend for them. He is a Muslim Brotherhood. They hate the Kuffar. You know, the Muslim Brotherhood, the logo of the Muslim Brotherhood. Let me show you the logo first. Hold on. Let me search for the logo. Give me a second. I will switch my screen off. Let me get you the logo of the Muslim Brotherhood so you can get an idea what we are talking about. What kind of cult? We are talking about. All right. Let us see. All right. I will try to take you to the Muslim Brotherhood official website. Actually, here we go, the logo in the front of us. You see the logo? This is the logo of the Muslims Brotherhood organization. And this is the official website of the Muslims Brotherhood. All right? So here it says, let us see, waiting for the website to open. The official website for the muslim brotherhood in the world in the top they have a logo let me show you the logo hold on i hope we can go to the logo directly well no let me do this let us go to uh, google photos then yeah we have to go to google photos All right. If you go here, if you look in the logo, let us zoom in. <clears throat> you will see here there is a word. It says "wa'aidu." Let us zoom in. Give me a second. Or oh, let us click on this one, maybe. 
all right that's better you see here there's two swords and there is a logo there is a word in Arabic here it says do anyone knows what I do what is what is that stand for what I do prepare for them prepare okay prepare what this is a statement taken from the Quran they can put the whole verse there in the logo so they took a verse from the Quran which it says what I do okay what do I do let us see واعدوا لهم ما استطعتم من قوة ومن رباط الخيل ترهبون به عدو الله وعدوكم وآخر وآخرين من دونهم what does that mean I mean let us see this is the logo of the Muslims Brotherhood chapter 8 verse number 60 translation against them make ready your strength to the utmost of your power including steeds of war to strike terror in the heart of the belief of the of the enemies of Allah by the way the translation is very funny and very stupid you know because here is speaking about from your horses you know the, the translator that they take the horses off because that will make the Quran look stupid and outdated I mean imagine a Muslim Brotherhood Erdogan is reading for us now he want to fight the Russian let us say and he is preparing the horses to fight the Russian reading this verse from the Quran but this is what it says so the Muslims when they translate in English they try to abrogate the Quran you know because the Quran is outdated and looks stupid and speaking about preparing our horses what what horses horses right do you see here the word horses appear do you notice do you notice the word horses here appear in the other translation the word horses disappear what happened because the Muslims they knew if they translate the word horses it's stupid it's silly the Muslim they say to us the Quran is for every time and this is the duty of the Mujahideen. Don't Allah, he knew that not long after they will have tanks and airplanes. So now we prepare for them horses. So this is the logo of the Muslim Brotherhood. Prepare for them your arms and your horses. To who? To kill the enemy of Allah. Thereby you may this made the enemy of Allah and your enemy and other besides who them who you know not this is the logo of the Muslim Brotherhood okay this is the logo of the Prince of Qatar this is the logo of the Erdogan so how Erdogan he have a membership in the NATO how Erdogan he have more than one American base in Turkey how Qatar voluntarily invite America to open the biggest base and he pay for it in his country. What is prepare for them your horses and your arms? Taqiyya. This is Taqiyya. America now is the most powerful country. So what we do? We go with them, fight them? No. And we have a guidance from the Quran, not only the verse, chapter 3, verse 28, there's verses in the Quran, encourage Muslims to play weak, to play peaceful as long they don't have the power to do so anyone remember what verses we are going to talk about who want to remember you remember before i had i i called the guy what's his name i forgot his name he was he was live in uh, in abn he called himself sheikh and he said to me, you are lying. It doesn't say that in the verse. Who remember the, the video? Anyone remember the video? If you have it, post it in the, you know, so people, they will see how, how, how we buzz them live. ABN, they brought two Christians. They have no idea what Islam is about. One of them is ex-Muslim. And the other one is an American, I think, as I remember. 
And this guy was playing all kinds of games. And those two Christians, they have no idea what to say to him. I could not take it no more. It took me less than 30 seconds to take him down. I break his nose. I broke his nose, his toes, and all his fingers. And he will never, ever. And I challenged him to debate me. He said, I cannot debate someone like you. You have no respect. I'm sure I have no respect. Liars. Chapter 47. Verse number 35. It tell Erdogan and it tell the Prince of Qatar what to do in the case of America, in the case of Germany, in the case of Russia, what we should do. Those European countries now, they are a lot stronger than us. We cannot even fight them for a second. So what we do? This is what we do. Simply, we will not cry for peace. Allah is saying to them, cry not for peace as long you are the uppermost. So Muslims should not go for peace with the enemy of Allah. Peace with who? Peace with anyone is the Muslim. Muslim, they should go in war until there is no non-Muslims left. This is what Islam is about. As long there is non-Muslims, Muslims are in war. As long there is one inch in this earth is not controlled by Sharia law, Muslim, they should be in war with the other inch which is not controlled by Sharia law. To make it simple, even the Muslim, they, they agree that Islam divide the world to, let us say, three territory. One of them is a gray. The land of Kufr, which means is controlled by non-Muslims. The land of Islam, which is controlled by Muslims and practice Sharia law. The land of Fitna, where there is Muslims, but there is no Sharia law. The land of Fitna and the land of Kufar, both of them, they are the land of war. But if we cannot go in war, what we do? For we are not the uppermost. Allah allow that. You can sign peace agreement, but this peace agreement is not an agreement as much it is a taqiyya. The day you feel that you are the uppermost, what do you do? That peace agreement is not exist and not valid. This is why we will see that in the Quran, there's a chapter, actually the real name of the chapter is Bara'a. What bara I mean? What is bara? Ah? Muhammad he signed an agreement with the kuffar, and now Muhammad became strong. He do not need the peace agreement. He needed the peace agreement to prepare himself. Now he do not need the peace agreement. Chapter nine, verse number one. Allah said to him, bara. Ah. Which means freedom from any obligation, all the peace agreement we did, bingo, it's gone. Why? Because Muhammad now, he have the power. And this is in perfect match with the other verse in chapter 47, where it says, cry not for peace when you are the uppermost. So Muhammad now, he is confident that he can be the uppermost. He is allowed to have a peace agreement, which means he allow himself to have a peace agreement as long he is not the uppermost. But the second you are the uppermost, why you want to be stupid and have a peace agreement? So this is the Islamic taqiyya, which is again repeated in chapter 328 and in many chapters. So Muhammad, he practiced taqiyya, or the Muslim, they practice taqiyyas in two ways. One taqiyya is against non-Muslims, and this is one of them, the one we see in the front of us, which means we sign for peace. We sign with, for peace. Like now, Egypt signed for peace with Israel. But do you really believe that the Muslims will have a peace with Israel? Anyone really here believe that the Muslims, they agree to have a peace agreement with the Jews? Who agree here? Who think that this is possible? Anyone of you here agree or he think really that Muslims they sign a peace agreement truly an agreement with the Jews <clears throat> if you think so let me tell you the bad news my friend you are very wrong and the verse in the front of you the Muslims are forbidden to have such an agreement and the only condition to do sign that agreement is 
if they are not the uppermost because this is what the verse saying don't go for peace agreement if you are the uppermost okay so now if we, if we are not the uppermost then you can do it but if you became an uppermost that agreement is not valid no more this is a temporary agreement the purpose of it is just to do taqiyya so we can survive what we can do they are stronger than us now how we can fight them how egypt can take back sina from israel they will never be able to take it they tried so what we would do okay we sign a peace agreement we could not take it by war we take it by agreement we sign a piece of paper mean nothing and one day if we have the uppermost we are going to attack the jews and destroy the state of israel so if you are an israeli and you think really you have a peace agreement with your neighbor that's when you are officially a pro you know like a an official fool if we can say so an idiot you know you cannot have a peace agreement with those people it's against their religion Muhammad he said it clearly especially for the Jews you know and actually not only to the Jews everybody the Quran said you see that the problem is when I start to talk about a topic I don't really prepare for a topic but many of you maybe they have a hard time to follow with me because we start talking about something and then we find ourselves quoting another verse and then another verse another verse and some people they are they have a hard time to follow up because it's too much information my friend it's a video you can stop the video anytime or replay the video and you can take the reference down Muhammad he have an obligation he signed a peace agreement if you ask the Muslim they say no no they attack him they attack my friend it is Muhammad who attacked them the Muslim they say that Muhammad he flee from Mecca because they wanted to kill him and they fabricate a story that Muhammad he made his cousin Ali sleep in the bed so he can run away I mean imagine how silly this story is Mecca is a small tiny village and there's no roads around I mean it's, it's nothing the houses are scattered all over so if somebody walk in the street people they will see you from a mile away there's no even street even after Muhammad he came back to Mecca after Muhammad he controlled Mecca even Muhammad when he is in Medina the, the 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 neighbors everybody see the wives of Muhammad when they are doing poopoo this is why the chapter of, of, of al-hijab came down if you remember where uh, Omar he said to the wife of, of Muhammad Sauda the women they hold their poopoo all day long and they go out at night in the dark they have no bathroom those Arab they have no civil light you know they, they're you know I saw houses in Saudi Arabia they are not built in the time of Muhammad. They are built long after, let us say a hundred years ago. Trust me, it is not even good for a goat. There's nothing inside. The walls is funny. The roof is from the cave time. I mean, it's nothing. So how Muhammad he was able to escape if people want to kill him? It's impossible. They say, no, no, he asked his cousin Ali, to sleep in his bed first of all this is a cowardly behavior to ask a child to sleep in your bed and then they will go inside your room supposedly and they will put their sword in the blanket and then the one will be killed as a child he is your cousin what a filthy prophet you are secondly nobody can back up those stories for there is no way if they want to kill him he can escape and in the same time those are his families who is the one want to kill him his cousins his uncles who Muhammad he left Mecca by himself willingly for he became the joke of everybody he could not take it no more he went to Al Medina he practiced taqiyya with the stupid Jews and I say the word is stupid because the result proved to us that they were stupid They've been slaughtered by Muhammad, the same one they hosted him. 
let me tell you what the Jews did at the time of Muhammad now I know that some people they would think okay Christian Prince now is teaching something against the Jews I'm not teaching against anyone I say things as it is though you like it you don't like it it's your business when Muhammad he started his cult he claimed to be Nasara now Nasara are not Christians the Muslim they translate the word Nasara as a Christians Nasara are a group of the Jews who wanted to stay as a Jews in the same time they believed in some of a Christianity some of it it's a cult it's a let us say it's a Jewish cult more than it is a Christian cult in the beginning Muhammad he was trying to find a group to join because he's no one and when you are no one you have to join somebody so you can be something Chapter 2, verse number 62. What a disaster. Muhammad he announced that the Christians, the Nasara in this case, not the really Christians, and the Jews and the Sabians, they are going to go to heaven. For all of us, we are the same. We are Muslims. All of us were the same. All of us, we are Sabian. All of us, we are Nasara. How that can be? Muhammad was trying to join a group. The Jews at that time, they found in Muhammad someone they can use. How they can use? I mean, what the point of Muhammad? What, what is the benefit of Muhammad? You see, the Jews through history, they have a painful history with the Christianity. And what is the painful history history with Christianity that the Jews always losing numbers and people joining from Judaism into Christianity? And the Jews, because of that, they consider themselves for a long time, and actually, even some of them they are until now, they are the worst enemy, and Christianity is their worst enemy. So each time there's a cult leader, he looks like he is going to make Christianity weaker, they sponsor him. And Muhammad was a great opportunity. Muhammad, he claimed that he believed in Isa. That's wonderful. So he believed in this uh, Christian belief, you know. He believed in Mary. Okay, wonderful. Sound like, and he's a stupid. So perfect. That will make people, Jews like us, will make them see Christianity looks stupid. Because look at Muhammad. He is one of them. He's from the Nasara. And remember, I said Nasara are a Jewish movement, they are not a Christian movement. Are you getting the point? Anyone understand me? The word here, Nasara, Nasara, this is not really a word mean Christians. There's no Christian in the Middle East, including me, call himself Nasara. You will never find one. We are not Nasara. And we have nothing to do with Nasara. Ask any uh, Arab Christian, he will say to you, Ana Masihi. Masihi mean, I, am, I belong to the Messiah. As simple as that. The name of the Messiah in Arabic, Al-Masih. So who I am? Masihi. Which mean Masonic, you know, you say Masonic Jew, you so so I am a Masonic Arab. As simple as that. The word, the word you see, Nasara have nothing to do with the word the 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 the, the, the city of Nasira, by the way, or or the, the Naziran, you know. The Nasara is a word was given by the Christians, the real Christians, to this Jewish group. As a title, and this word mean those who have a poor. The word Nasara is a word mean poor. Poor in what? Poor in understanding the Bible. So the Christians, they gave them a name. They called them the poor. Not poor in money. They are Jewish. They are very rich. They are not poor. They are wealthy. But they are poor in understanding the teaching of Jesus. And that name was a name of a cult which is rejected by the Christians, and all those members of this cult are Jewish. Take a note. And then this cult, when the Jews, they flee from Israel, and all of you, you know why. I don't know how many of you knows too much about history. 
after the Roman became Christians the Jews the Jews they suffer why because simply they try their best to fight Christianity in the same time let us say maybe there is some places they have unfair treatment they were discriminated by the Roman for they are just Jews however the Jews they throw they, they choose a wrong path to do or to deal with this discrimination they join the enemy of the Roman Empire in the year 16 for uh, 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 sorry 614 the Jews they join the Persian in their attack on Jerusalem and Jerusalem was almost burned and the church the Holy Church in Jerusalem all the churches were burned and actually the Quran spoke about this moment but I'm trying to explain to you why those Nasara are existing in Saudi Arabia the Jews and those Nasara they flee anywhere is under the control of the Roman which is a Christian where is that can be anywhere and Saudi Arabia was under not under and not under the control of the Roman there's a chapter in the Quran it's called the chapter of the Roman chapter 30 verse number one two three etc the Muslim they say in here there's a clear prophecy about the Prophet Muhammad they say that Muhammad he predicted that the Roman will be victorious on the Persian but if you read this uh, verse carefully if you have my books you will see the answers you know I have there proving Muhammad to be a false prophet based on this chapter the news came to Muhammad that the Roman were defeated and here you will notice it says Alif Lam Mim A L M. If you ask any Muslim what does that mean, he will say to you, Allah knows best. Let us think about it. You see, I don't want to change my topic about the taqiyya, but you see how the how the how the information take us to different and you know, I mean, you find yourself walking in books in history without knowing even though you are talking supposed about something else but in order to give you an image we have to cover many things in the same time and please guys don't forget to invite your friends let us have more people here like I see only 200 something here 220 I mean why I saw in one app there's a girl she was changing her pant her jeans and not in front of the camera she changed her room and come back she was having 700 people watching other video she was like you know 2500 a woman she is try, trying a lipstick take I mean come on we need a we need a camera and the women doing lipstick take here and we will get a lot more viewers so the news arrived to Muhammad that the Roman defeated and the non-Muslims, they were making fun of Muhammad. Look, look, read with me carefully, because many people, when they read, they don't notice what's happening here. And here, actually, this is in total agreement with my claim that Muhammad was claiming to be Nasara. You see, Muhammad, when he claimed to be Nasara, he claimed to be Christian, because he did not know better. He know what he know, that the Nasara are the Christians. For around him, there is no Christians. There is only Nasara in, in the place where he lived. So the Roman, which is supposed to the Nasara, according to Muhammad, he think they are, they've been defeated. And the Arab, who they are not Nasara, they start making fun of Muhammad and the Jews too. They start making fun of Muhammad. Why they are making fun of Muhammad? What is the business of Muhammad? The Roman, they are defeated. So why Muhammad will be upset because Muhammad he considered himself Nasara and now the news arrive that the Nasara are defeated by who by the pagan so Muhammad he wanted to prove to them that my people will not be defeated Allah told me this so the Roman Empire has been defeated who's talking supposedly Allah Aka Muhammad in the land close by 
but they even this after the defeat they will be soon victorious actually the translation is very silly and very stupid it says here in Arabic if you better is which mean in less than nine years between three to nine years they will be victorious uh, within few years with Allah is the decision in the past in the future in the day shall the believers rejoice hold on hold on why the believers shall rejoice for the victory of the Roman anyone can tell me let us see who of you is 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 walking with my with my dots anyone understand why the Muslims who they are who is the believers who who is the believers here the, the Muslims or the Roman why the believers if they are the Muslims will rejoice because the Roman they are victorious any Muslim can tell me why the believers will rejoice whoever they are let us say they are the Arab or either maybe the Roman if they are the Roman that's a disaster because a few years after Muhammad he decided to kill them all so how they are believers and they are kuffar how the Quran says those who believe in Jesus as God they are kuffar those who believe in the Trinity they are kuffar so who is the believers who they will rejoice any Abdu can tell us if those are the Muslims, why the Muslim will rejoice for the victory of the Roman? <laughs> Anyone knows? Anyone knows? No answer. No answer. Because at that moment, Muhammad, he was speaking about the Roman as believers. They are believers like him. So when they insulted Muhammad, saying to him, your believers, the Roman, your people, they've been killed. They've been defeated. Muhammad, he felt offended. For he claimed to be one of them. And now the God of the Roman is not working. This is how he see it. They start making fun of him that where is your God? What is you keep saying to us we will be victorious we will be victorious blah victor blah 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 here we go the Roman are defeated Muhammad he could not take it no more and he told them Allah told me that they will be victorious and the believers will rejoice who is the one who will rejoice in the victory the Roman because they are the one who they are defeated why the Muslim will be you know what? I challenge any Muslim to give me an answer. If there is any Muslim who ate too much halal food lately, he can give us an answer why the Roman or why the Muslims even they will rejoice for the victory of the Roman. Imagine, guys, that Allah He said to Muhammad, the American they lost the war in Vietnam, but in a few years the American will rejoice. And he called them believers. Trump will rejoice. If we call Zachary Naik right now and we ask him what happened. Ta -da -dun, ta -da -dun, ta -da -dun, ta -da -dun. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> uh, brother Zachary Naik, uh, sorry if we wake you up. Uh, it's time to pray, yes? Actually, I'm preparing. Do it with me. Uh, we have a question about the chapter of the Roman. First of all, don't ask me. I know exactly who are you. You can send your name. You can send your voice. But I know exactly who are you. Your name is Trump. Uh, uh, no. Okay, not, not Trump. Hold on. Speak more. Speak more. Um, <clears throat> uh, I am actually. Okay, okay. I, I, I know you. Hold on. You are Ahmadiyya. Uh, no. Okay, okay, hold on. 
You are an Indian Hindu. Uh, no. Okay, I give up. Uh, I'm Christian Prince. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I swear by Allah. I knew it. First of all, what do you want to do with the tatter of the Roman? I will tell you why you are interested. Because first of all, you, obviously you are a Roman. Secondly, I saw your big star in the internet, Yurik Blonde. And number three, you keep saying in the internet, I'm black African-American, which is absolutely it's impossible. How you can be black African-American from Japan and you are blonde in the same time? Obviously, you are a liar. Uh, brother Zakanak, it was a joke. I was just joking, but I have a question. Can you answer it now? Okay, go ahead. Why the Quran said that the Roman, they are believers and they will rejoice in the chapter of the Roman. First of all, you are assuming that the Roman will do it. The fact is not the Roman. It was the prophet and his companion. Uh, okay, brother. Why the prophet and his companion, they will be rejoiced because of the victory of the Roman? Because simply, they should rejoice. Imagine, in this time, you are watching the math of football between Germany and the Roman. And you are a fan of the Roman. And the Roman today, they are defeated. And then you have a prophecy from a great prophet. His name is the prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, saying that the Roman, they are going to win the second match. So why you will not rejoice? But, but what does this have to do with being a believer? Why? They are the believers. I thought the football is haram. You are stupid, and I told you you are stupid. This is just an example. It's a parable. Don't you read in the Bible that this is a huge parable? It's a parable. It's not a true. We, we Muslim, we don't like football. It's haram. But I'm giving you a parable because this is how you understand. You are stupid. Okay. But still you do not explain to me because this parable does not match with reality. You Muslims are not fan of the Roman. You hate them. And your prophet, he fought the Roman a few years after. So why he will rejoice for their victory? There is many things in the Quran. Nobody knows what it means, save Allah. So let me to make a thought. Your questions are very stupid, and I have no answer for you. And I tell you, if you call me one more time, one more time, I'm going to assume and I'm going to sue you to the FBI for sexual harassment. Because always you call me after the middle of the night. And obviously, there is something behind this call. Don't call me again. And that's the end of the Islamic answer. The believers will be rejoicing for the victory of the Roman. Is that true? Do we have any Muslim additional to Zakir Naik have different opinion? So do you see guys how we support and we prove that Muhammad was claiming to be one of those believers who they are the Nasara, the Nasara for Muhammad, he think all oh, the world is Nasara, but he do not know the idiot that the Roman don't believe in what the Nasara believe. Nasara are a Jewish cult who believe in some of Christianity and Judaism in the same time, which means they want to keep the law of Moses in the same time. They believe in some of a Christianity, some, not all of it. And Muhammad, he copied from them many, many stories. All the stories about who Muhammad, he called him Isa, which means Asos, taking the, the Greek name. All those stories are taken from the books of Nasara. Like the story of Jesus creating from the mother bird. Search it, you will find where it's coming from. Muhammad, he took it from the Nasara. The Nasara, obviously, those Jewish, they have books which we don't agree with and we don't accept to be part of the Bible. Muhammad, he takes his stories and his ideas about what it's called Christianity from the Nasara and he thinks the Roman are Nasara too. Let me be sure that my Skype is on. Hold on. In case any Abdul want to call us. Because as you know, customers come first. They want to be sure that Muslims, they've been given the opportunity to call us. 
and to refute because uh, trust me Muslims they can refute me so easy it's so easy but they, they are very humble they don't want to do it all right and now my Skype is on for anyone from the Muslims and please only if you are a Muslim for now call me later maybe we can give a chance for non-Muslims to call <coughs> Do we have any Muslim? Any Muslim would like to call me? <clears throat> All right. Well, if you feel like you want to call me and you know you, you think you can do it, please feel free. So here we prove clearly that Muhammad is taking the side of the Roman and he believed the Roman and the Muslims both are believers and this is will demolish all the claim that the Muslims they say that at that time the Bible was corrupted because how the Roman are considered believers to the point that the believers will rejoice for the victory of the believers and why Muhammad get upset for the victory for the defeat of the Roman what is his business isn't it Muhammad who said attack the Roman and get their blondie girls? Uh, yeah, this this is later. Later, when Muhammad he said to the believers, the Roman, I am a believer like you, but I am a prophet. Accept me. They refuse. Then he waged war against them. Now we go back to the taqiyah. The Muslim Brotherhood, their first, their logo is taken from this chapter in front of us, chapter 8, verse number 60. Make ready for them arms and horses to kill them all, to install terror in the heart of the believer, disbelievers. Terror. This is the logo of the Muslim Brotherhood. Okay. Erdogan believe in that. This is his logo because he's a member of the Muslim Brotherhood. The Prince of Qatar, he is a member of the Muslim Brotherhood. The King of Saudi Arabia, he is an enemy for the Muslim Brotherhood, but he believes in the same verse. The Muslim Brotherhood is just an organization, a global organization to take over the world using political Islam, organized party of Islam. And actually, there's more, more, uh, uh, more powerful party than Muslim Brotherhood it's called Hizb tahrir Hizb tahrir is more spread and it's created by someone from Israel a sheikh from Israel and Hizb tahrir they believe in killing all the Jews and all the Christians establish Sharia law the same exactly as the Muslim Brotherhood but the difference between them the Muslim Brotherhood they are smarter they are like a snake they use taqiyah in everything they do so now we showed you how taqiyya is a practice in Islam? There is taqiyya against Islam, which the Arab, they practiced. You know, the Arab themselves, they practice. And those Arab, they don't want to be killed, so they practice taqiyya against Islam. And he said, the, and Muhammad, he said to them, well, I know you believe not, but you know, you are, say you are a Muslim. Say you are a Muslim. The Arab, they said, Amanna, we believe. Say, say to them, you will not, you did not believe. But say, Aslamna, we became Muslims, which means we surrender. Oh, the screen is not showing? Okay, thank you for telling me. That is the taqiyya which you can use against Islam, which means you can lie, and Allah proving that. Allah have no problem with you lying. Hello? Hello, brother. Hey, Amir, how is, are you, my friend? Is there CB? There's CB. <laughs> <laughs> how are you doing, my friend? How is everything? I'm fine, CB. How is Germany? It's fine, it's okay. I had a live stream uh, two hours ago. Uh, 
and try my best to bring pre people to Christ and tell them that uh, Christ is the only salvation that we have, human. And this is the import most important uh, thing to say to the people that Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life. And yes. Yeah, that's wonderful. This was my what do you think Amir, about about the verses we are reading now this verse about Muhammad saying to the Arab you believe not but you are a Muslim what do you think about it um, chapter 49 yeah, verse yeah. number 14 maybe you can read it in German for the German people if there's German with us I don't know how many German they are here oh, hey, chapter yes. 49 verse number 14 what the topic is uh, uh, and Taqiyya. We, we are showing them how taqiyya practice in two ways. Uh, we have a caller, T cat. Let me see, be sure first he's a Muslim. Okay. Hold on. Hello? Hello? Yes? Yes, are you live on air? Yes, I'm live on air. Who's talking with me, please? Uh, I'd rather not my name. I just have a question. Sure, what is the question? Go ahead. Um... I've been married for 21 years, okay. and I was raised a Christian, and I consider myself Christian still. But my husband is a Muslim, but I, I really don't consider him 100% Muslim because he doesn't really, I think I know more than he does, but just from watching your videos and hearing them. But uh, the only problem I have is I have four daughters. And I know for myself, I teach them what I can about you know my religion. It's just, it's just a struggle for me because now I'm in my 40s and I'm questioning everything, you know. Okay. So what what and is your uh, what, what how I can help you in, in your like slowly how to get him to see. Well, you know, uh, let me let me first uh, switch to brother uh, Amir. Amir, if you hear me on YouTube, if you can call me just in five minutes again, please, just uh, so we can just help the sister and I will be back to you. Uh, uh, listen, first of all. This is not, I'm not going to answer you first. I'm going to answer everybody in the future. Any woman, she will get married. You see, marriage have to be established between people who have something in common together. Yes. Okay. What do you have in common with this guy when you married him? Well, according to him, how he explained it to me was that he believed everything I did. Okay. And, and it was going to school when you go to elementary school you go to high school you go to you go to university he felt like he was at the university level that we believe in god we love jesus you know so it's it's the same thing you know but now that i'm older i, I see the light you know yeah. and i'm i'm puzzled because i don't know my faith is strong and i just don't know if i should talk about it with him i mean marriage is serious to me i want to be with him and he doesn't pressure me at all okay. when it comes to his religion. But, you know, I want that for my children. Right. So what about your children now? They believe they are Muslims? They believe they are Christian? What do they believe? I think they say they're, they're, they're Muslim. Their mother is Christian. Uh, we celebrate Christmas with my family. You know, they get all these holidays every year. They, they accept everybody, you know. Hmm. But do you I try to teach them. Do you? Okay. So... But for, so for them, they think they are Muslims, the children. Um, but in deep down, they think we they don't want. They always say we don't want to marry Arab. You know, we don't want to marry typical Arab. Yeah, I don't know what the, that means. This is not about, about Arab or not. The question is, do they think they are Muslims or they are not Muslims? How old they are? Uh, are I your, think they think children's? that they're oh, 18, 16, 14, and six. Okay. Well, you know, they are still young. And I advise you, you know, you can get my books, you can watch my videos, you can share with them. You can use my videos to help you to explain things for them. That Islam is mm -hmm. really a bad religion, a stupid religion. The most important is, it's a stupid religion. Very important mm -hmm. to, 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 uh, to focus on that. But the most important is for you right now, is to try not to think of yourself, but to think about your family more than yourself. Your marriage is already... I do. Something That's does. why sometimes I yeah. feel like crying because yeah. you know I feel so, like. But but how you can how you can uh, uh, fix a, a, a problem you created, you know all those years the the the, the, the you know let us say the problem is building up, and now mm -hmm. it became bigger than it's it was when you get married first day. Yes. Uh, 
the only way to to uh, uh, to try to fix things is to fight it to fight this cult how you fight this cult is to educate yourself as much as you can arm yourself with knowledge information questions and answers be logical don't force your children to believe in something speak to them nicely mm -hmm. logically don't treat them as if they are stupid and you are the smart who knows because everyone in his in in certain point of his life he think he is the smart and the rest are the stupid ones right. and this is one day you decide to marry a muslim because you thought you are doing a smart decision and you are the smart one mm -hmm. but later you find out now that it was not really a good decision maybe it i mean i i tried to to slowly say you know if, okay we believe in god but you know when you want to compare two people two prophets according to him you cannot be jesus i always say that you know he was sinless he loved everyone he thought he taught love your enemy we cannot compare uh, Muhammad between Muhammad. Do any of compare that. between Muhammad no and comparison. Jesus is an insult to Jesus. Muhammad I know. is a child molester, is a criminal, is a thief, is is a, is a is a hateful, is a is a crazy man, is everything. So I guess I have to educate myself in the Quran too, so I can come up with, you know, yeah, you have points and and my friend, education is the most important thing we accomplish in our life. People Hello? think, you hear me? Do you hear me? Hello. I hear you. Do you hear me? I look like we lost her. She <laughs> hear me, but I don't hear her. Do you hear me, uh, lady? Okay, maybe mm -hmm. I should call her back. Anyway, l listen to me carefully. I'm not going to call you back. Listen to me in YouTube. People, they work their life to accomplish a career. And the career most of people they accomplish is to make money and then they make the money do you hear me yes i lost you no Sorry. problem yeah I, I was saying that you know the most important thing in life is to accomplish is education a human being without knowledge is the same as a cat right who knows nothing except what it's programmed for which is mean to eat to go to the bathroom and to maybe to have sex and that's it I mean, my parents were very religious, and I was raised to just treat people the way you want to be treated and love everyone. But this is not, a and that's the but, way but, I am. But this is not a Christianity. Christianity is but not. That, Christianity is not about. That's the Christian about, way, right? It's my, the love, my dear you know. sister, if I can call you that, yes. Christianity is not about to treat people the way people like to treat you. Only this has nothing have to do with it. Christianity actually. Christianity says many things, and we take only one sentence, and we say we, my family, are religious, but obviously your family did not succeed they didn't like it but they, no, they, they did saw. not succeed no no that you see they did I not know. succeed it's a failure when a yes. child he marry from someone is a muslim this family have a big failure they did not educate you they did not tell you that you as a christian you should not marry from someone is not a christian the bible full of verses is speaking of that that we mm -hmm. christians we only if you are a person who converted to christianity and you were married previous to your conversion that is the case where you can stay in your marriage but a christian although i feel like he's more like us anyway <laughs> if that's possible i don't know him i'm um, not talking about him uh, you see i'm not talking about him the problem is not him the problem is his religion he might be a yes. good person i don't know him i'm not talking yeah. against him i'm not saying anything about, about him i'm saying that if we have two people they believe in two different god two different teaching two different uh, uh, belief two different uh, ethic how we can live together somebody right. believe that a, a girl she can get married at the age of six years old what do you would say to him do you like oh him? my goodness do you like him to bring uh, his friend who is 50 years old and say i want to i want my girl who is uh, seven years old to marry this guy what he would do this is See, how do you answer to that because he doesn't agree with that either so i'm like well people did that back then P kings and they married how many no no you know, kids they, well, well, no 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 hold on hold on you see, when he say kings, they did that. Those are sick kings. They are not kings. Yeah, they wasn't religious. It doesn't. Exactly. It doesn't matter who did that. Whoever do that is a sick person. So mm -hmm. if a king do that, that because he's sick, not because he is a good guy. And so I mean, there's a they, 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 always they justify things, ugly things, and stupid. Right? Exactly. To the point. Okay, yeah. someone he did that as an example. They say to me, uh, David, he have many women. Okay, David was a sick person at that moment. And he was a person who asked God for forgiveness. He prayed. He made songs asking God for forgiveness. He is a sinner. So who said that we praise David for his crimes? He did the crimes, not only sin. Right. So 
there's a huge difference between saying a king he did that and somebody says this is how God he wanted right when a king he do that we say this is sick and he is sick and he is ill and he is he's a criminal but okay. you claim that this is a teaching of God from God and you make followers by millions following you which means follow your crimes that is satanic Mm -hmm. So why he doesn't say to you why Muhammad did that? He would say that at that time people used to do that. Show me. Challenge him to show so, him to show you one story of one Arab at the time of Muhammad did marry someone she is at the age of Aisha. So do you believe that a lot of Muslims have evolved like today? Like oh his family nobody marries four women they don't marry children like like what is it like they're so strong in their faith no because uh, because they don't have the opportunity to do so if you send him back to Saudi Arabia they think it's do they, don't, they don't think it's right they say oh we can't marry for wives you can't no. treat them equally they are hypocrites. so it's impossible they are hypocrites they are hypocrites it's allowed in Islam no. what we cannot treat them as equally Muhammad was able to treat his wife equally he had 13 they they don't say that they say how can you treat women equally so it's it shouldn't be done uh, okay, that's me. The Quran is stupid again because if you cannot, <laughs> if you cannot treat women equally, and this is the reason not to marry four. So why Allah He says marry why is it two there? and three yeah. and four if you can't treat them equally? Right. In the same chapter, saying He cannot treat them equally, so it's a stupid contradiction. And why mm -hmm. all the Muslims they practice that? Why Muhammad himself was practicing to marry more women, many women? Oh, more, because more he helped. Four. He helped widows and you know. What widow? You help whatever. a widow by sleeping with her? Cannot I help you if you are a widow without sleeping with you? Right. I mean, what kind I of agree. what kind of uh, uh, charity this charity is that a woman she need help? I sleep with her and I give her a sandwich. <laughs> I mean, this is not charity, you know. Obviously, this is this is this is you know abuse. A woman she right. need help, you know. And and who is the widow Muhammad? He did help her. Name one for me, Khadija, who have she is the second rich woman in the in the in the, in the tribe. How he helped her? He used to work for her. <laughs> I remember one discussion with my sister-in-law. She says, you know, in Islam, we have rights. And I stopped her. I said, listen, your mother has a will. You get less than your brothers. So how is that rights? Equal rights for women. If you go to Saudi Arabia, where are the rights there? Well, that's not a country. Well, like, it's not really Islam. I go, but... No, this country. is Islam. This is Islam. This is Islam. <laughs> they, are, they are ignorant. You know, I, I advise you. I yeah. advise you, sister. Uh... To bring those Muslims who they are saying to you this is wrong and this is right bring them to you to you to your house and call me and let them sit next to you and let them ask me questions ask like you. now they say to you that this is not Islam but because they are ignorant this is what the Quran says I, that, that, I honestly believe they don't really know their own I, yeah, I they don't know the they don't know I understand they don't know but at the end of the day still you are associating and living yeah. with Muslims this is the Quran in the front of you chapter 4 verse number 11 it says that the the man he will inherit twice as the women. This is Quran. This is they say to you this is not Islam because they are ignorant. But the problem is obviously, with my respect to you, I'm not insulting you. You are ignorant more than they are, because still you cannot answer them when they say that to you. They say to you, this is this is not Islam. No. Okay, but you cannot right. refute them. Why? Because still you have a huge part of ignorance in your life. You are living with them, but you did not learn about them, so you can refute them and you can make them believe that this is stupid. They yeah. agree that this is not Islam. Okay, so, so you agree now this is wrong, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. If I show it to you that this is Islam, you will believe Islam then is wrong? Use that logic. But in order to do that, you have to educate yourself. Yes, I agree. So Thank you so much for yeah. your work, and I'm grateful I found you, and I will keep educating myself and try to help them as well. No problem, and don't 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 feel offended because I said you have ignorance. I have ignorant too. All of you have ignorant. Too. No, no, it's true. Yeah. It's true. Ignorance so, is not a bad thing. It's yeah. just something you don't know. Uh, like you know, if you you know, like uh, you know, uh, uh, if I write a letter in English, uh, you will find maybe uh, out of uh, one hundred words, I have maybe twenty words are wrong because I have ignorance in English. That's you know. But the problem is, if we suffer from a problem, then we should not stay ignorant about it because that is dangerous. This is our problem now. It's not something I can ignore, right? So in your case, you have to educate yourself. It became a necessity to you, not an entertainment. All right? Do you hear me, sister? I think I lost you. Anyway, you can still uh, listen to me in uh, in YouTube. Uh, 
you know when you speak to a Muslim you need to know what you will speak about before you speak to this person otherwise they will make fun of you and you will look like a fool and they can shut you up into word and this is not Islam uh, this have nothing to do with Islam ISIS have nothing to do with Islam right I, don't, I keep losing connection but I just yeah, want to say right. thank you again and I appreciate all the information and I'm gonna keep educating myself get my books from amazon.com for sure I have many books in, in English and let your uh, your children read them so the best way is just to show them love and just to compare, like, talk all, about their religion first of all you have to have patient yes. patient is very important don't go aggressive and don't shout at them and then try to force them to never, believe in never. something yeah so try to be patient same time show them and use logic and uh, uh, let us say a scientific way to prove your point they say this is not Islam yes. right away go and Thank find you. it and show them and see see God bless this Thank you Islam. Christian friends Thank you thank you very much thank you bye 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 all right sorry uh, 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 Amir I uh, I hang up on you I thought actually it's a Muslim calling me let us get back Amir You know, don't don't marry from someone from different faith. Even if he's an atheist, not necessarily a Muslim. Because, you know, how we are going to have a life together if we don't share the same value? That will not work. Necessarily a Muslim. Uh, do you hear me, Amir? I hear you, brother. All right. I apologize. I had to answer this uh, lady. Uh, actually, I thought she nope. knows them, but um, you know she is not. Anyway, so so we were we were talking about the taqiyya, the taqiyya which is practice in Islam and practice and taqiyya which is Muslim allowed to practice against Islam. Do you have an idea about those two? There's, uh, there's, two, I made... there's two taqiyya. Yeah, the taqiyya. The first taqiyya is in chapter three, verse twenty-eight. Correct. Yes. Okay. This is what I know. But there is other taqiyya, which is a Muslim he can use against Islam. Do you know about it? No. Who is a Muslim would like to call us and tell us about this taqiyya? What What do you Muslims know about it? <laughs> Any Muslim? If you go with the Quran, you can open your uh, your German uh, version in the Quran, Amir. Uh, in chapter 49 verse number 14 actually I will show you the German uh, text on on the screen okay do you see it this is again chapter 49 verse number 14 and we are going to switch to German in case there are some people who speak German here maybe you can read it I don't know if you see it in the screen now Is it showing from your side? Yes, but it's uh, take a little bit time because the live stream right, okay. from YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Uh, verse 14. Die Wüstenaraber sagen, wir glauben, sag, ihr glaubt nicht wirklich, sondern sagt, wir sind Muslime geworden, denn der Glaube ist noch nicht in euren Herzen eingezogen. Wenn ihr aber Allah und seinem Gesandten gehorcht, verringert er euch nichts von euren Werken. Gewiss, Allah ist allvergeben, barmherzig. Mm -hmm. They say with their mouth, we believe. But in, in fact, they believe not. And they say, we are Muslim. We are becoming Muslims. But the, the, the faith is not in their heart. Hmm. Such, such like this. Well, the translation, I don't know the, what the German is saying exactly. But obviously, it looks like the term translation is not really true, accurate. What it says here in this verse, that the Arab, they say, the Arab, that we, mm -hmm. we believe. Allah said to Muhammad, tell them, you do not believe, but you say, <laughs> but you say, which means you say, he is telling them what to say. Mm -hmm. You should say, we are Muslims. You should say, you can say you are a Muslim, but you cannot say we believe. For belief did not enter your heart. So what, what Muhammad is saying that Allah told him to tell them that those Arab they converted to Islam and they say we believe. Allah he said to them, Don't say we believe, 
say we are Muslims for you have no faith in your heart in Islam but yet he is saying to them say we are Muslims mm. are you getting the point so Islam yeah. Muhammad here is teaching the Muslim to play taqiyya against Allah <coughs> you can be a Muslim but you don't have to believe do you, do you see what I'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. so you can say I am a Muslim you can but don't say I believe so what is I am a Muslim in the chapter before this one we are reading here from chapter 49 if we go to verse number 39 we will see it says that Allah he said to the Arab to the Bedouin He told them convert to Islam. Oh, switch to Arabic. But the Shia are the masters of Taqiyya. Huh? All of them, they are the same. Trust me. Shia and Sunni, both of them, they practice. <coughs> they practice Taqiyya. And as again, there's two kinds of Taqiyya: the Taqiyya which is against Allah, and Taqiyya against non-Muslims. You know. So. Uh, uh, you can be you can be playing taqiyya against Muhammad and you can practice it as long you say I'm a Muslim or what he want from you like you can you know do whatever you want I mean okay say shahada don't believe in Islam in your heart but practice Islam this is what this is what the verse is saying you know mm -hmm. so you don't want to believe no problem but you have to be a Muslim and that is the biggest taqiyya ever in history announced by Muhammad claiming that this is a way of life which means a way of lying and the funny thing mm -hmm. to you this is a lie during the war, war yes this is a war, war Muhammad will kill you if you don't believe so what happened that those Arab they decide to use taqiyya against Allah so they said to Allah okay we are we, we believe no Allah he said no no don't say we don't say we believe say we are Muslims and because you are a Muslim you are still alive but none of you have faith and the faith never enter your heart now the question to the Muslims how those people they join Islam but yet they have no faith in their heart to Islam any Muslim can explain and this is can be found in the chapter after that chapter uh, before that uh, 48 verse number 16 how they became Muslims any Muslim can tell us somebody he don't have a faith in Islam but yet he became a Muslim how he was able to be convinced to join Islam <laughs> the answer is very easy if you go in the Quran you will see that when the victory came when the day of victory came what happened people they start joining Islam into waves chapter 110 verse number one and two let us see what it says when comes the help of Allah and victory thou dost see people enter Allah religion in crowd by thousands in one day why they enter the city they kill all the men who they are fighting or even the one who don't agree with Islam and then everybody convert to Islam in one day in one second by uh -huh. crowd you know the whole city will gather in the town and they say Shahada in one second we convince them all in one second because there's no need for a debate now it's a sword you you, uh, brother. you convert or you die brother yes I, I think I think a Muslim will call you. All right, hang up, please, uh, uh, Amir. Uh, Let us see if this uh, Muslim he will call. I uh, hope okay. will do it. Thank you, Sam. Uh, thank you, Amir, for calling. Please, thank, thank you. <coughs> All right, my friend, uh, the Muslim, Assalam, Sheikh, who want to call me? 
Another thing he will do. <clears throat> Give me a call, my friend. Here we go. We made a mirror just hang up for you. <clears throat> so now what happened, <clears throat> we are talking about Erdogan. We go back to the original topic. Erdogan, he practiced two taqiyya. One is against Allah and one is against Muslims. Uh, sorry, one is against uh, uh, Muslims and Allah and one against non-Muslims. The one is against non-Muslims. He have a base for the American. He is a member of the NATO. This is taqiyya because the Quran in chapter 5 verse number 51, it says, whoever take them as a friend, he is one of them. Whoever take them as a friend, he is one of them. He's a kafir. Chapter 3 verse 28 says, unless you don't mean it as a security. So that Turkey, they have a security agreement with the NATO to protect themselves. They are weak. The Ottoman Empire collapse, bankruptcy, corrupt. They cannot fight any country in the neighborhood. Like now, you hear Erdogan too much. He's screaming and shouting. If you go in war with any country in the in the in the neighborhood, like Russia, and this is why he he kissed the, the the shoes of Putin every day. He is no match. His country actually is going to lose any war they go in from the first few days because there is no economy. You know, war need money. All the money of Qatar will not be able enough to save Turkey from what is coming. The Prince of Qatar, he kept uh, trying to hold Erdogan in his feet, but that will not work. Erdogan is coming down and he will bring Turkey down with him. In order to avoid what's coming, Erdogan, he practiced the taqiyya. One is against the Muslims, so he claimed in one hand that he is a Muslim. He prayed to Allah five times. He, uh, he support the Mujahideen in Syria. In the same time, now he want to kill them all. Yesterday, he was their friend. So the Mujahideen today, they announced that Erdogan is the enemy of Islam and he is a kafir. They cannot take his taqiyya no more. So they discovered to get him busted. And they decide to announce him as a kafir. So the, the Sheikh Al-Maqdisi, who is one of the highest scholars for the Abdul, he announced Erdogan as a kafir and he said he is one of them. Now, what I'm expecting from Erdogan to get more in kufr, which means he more is going to sponsor the enemy of Islam <clears throat> in order to, to survive. So I believe, you see, Erdogan in the <clears throat> for a long time, for many years, he have a propaganda that he is going to free Jerusalem. <clears throat> if you remember, uh, one of the propaganda of Erdogan that he saw a dream and in the dream, he saw himself walking in Jerusalem, a river is speaking to him from the ground, blah, 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 blah. So the Muslim, they get an idea that Erdogan is going to be the caliphate who is going to free Jerusalem from the Jews. And the Muslims, they were like happy to have Erdogan. He will establish the Islamic State. Finally, we will find the Muslim leader who can lead us to victory. Erdogan, is not talking about the dreams in Jerusalem no more. Right now, the intelligence of Turkey, they have a big unit of the Mossad in the middle of Turkey, and they are helping and working together side by side to help Erdogan to stay in the office. Most of the enemy of Erdogan, all their information is coming from the intelligence of Israel. The enemy of Erdogan, which is the friend of Oglo. The one who tried to make a revolution in the army to take Erdogan off. Erdogan is the puppet of the Israeli. He is the puppet of the Russian. In the same time, he is trying his best to get back to be the puppet of USA. But it's not working because USA demand a lot of things which Erdogan, he cannot really, he's under a lot of pressure. Economy is bad. He have a lot of terrorists under his, let us say, uh, territory, live between the Turkish. He hosted them for long. 
and now he do not know what to do with them he have Syrian war which is a reason to uh, uh, to make the economy of Turkey very very in a very bad shape and he have terrorist groups who they are departing themselves from, from his control day by day and this is what happened this week where Al-Qaeda announced Erdogan to be a kafir so now finally Erdogan and Al-Qaeda they have a divorce before they used to have sex together but there's no kids now there's no kids and there's no sex Erdogan he did his best to protect Al-Qaeda from being demolished because he need them but now the Russian they said to Erdogan you have to make a choice either you sleep under our feet or you stay in the bed with Al-Qaeda which one you want we will not let them stay make a decision Erdogan in a very bad shape economy is extremely bankrupt jobs investment currency money is fleeing the country from everywhere and every how people in the country themselves they are looking for different destination Muhammad Erdogan he is giving citizenship to anyone who buys some sandwiches or some villas in Turkey they are doing everything they can so they can bring money to the country but the money is fleeing the country because people they lost their trust in such a country in such a presidency for this guy is like a snake he have no friends same time he have no enemies which mean he switch his enemies overnight from a friend to an enemy from an enemy to a friend yesterday he was a friend for al-qaeda today he want to kill them all it was Erdogan who announced that al-qaeda are kuffar two weeks ago and then al-qaeda they respond and they announce kafir is Erdogan he is a Christian he is one of them he friend the Russian he is one of them he is a Shia he friend the Shia he is one of them whoever take them as a friend he is one of them and obviously Al-Qaeda they are more decent Muslim from Erdogan one million times better than Erdogan as Muslims for they are practicing really the Islamic faith Erdogan he practiced Taqiyya but he practiced Taqiyya as we said against Muslims too he have many faces he's the same as Obama Obama is a Jew with the Jews he's a Christian with the Christians he's a Muslim with the Muslims he's an atheist in the CNN he's a believer in Fox News depend he's talking to who and people they you know they are not you cannot fool them for long he's for long in the office and people now all the Muslim they knew that Erdogan nothing but a fraud and the country is coming down and nobody can save this country from what is coming in the coming month I believe the Russian they will launch a big attack on Al-Qaeda Erdogan is going to give them all the information about their uh, you know Al-Qaeda uh, how I'm going to call him guys he should call me you guys are asking me to call the guy how I'm going to call him shouldn't he call me first you guys are funny anyway so Erdogan he have the whole map because his army was and still until now in Idlib in Syria and they have a lot of intelligence because they are from the terrorist groups the army of Erdogan they are the one who trained the terrorists they are the one who armed them say they knew all the map of Al-Qaeda and I believe strongly that Erdogan he gave all the maps of Al-Qaeda all their tunnels under the ground is in the hand of the Russian already and that will make it extremely easier for the Russian to destroy Al-Qaeda in a very short period of time and it's going to happen Islam is based on Taqiyya Taqiyya against Allah 
and taqiyya against non-Muslims. It's a very wide practice, but mostly people who they have not too much education, they speak only about taqiyya, which is one-sided, which means is against non-Muslims. But in fact, in Islam, taqiyya is widespread practice where Muslim they practice taqiyya every day in their life. Like when a Muslim he come to America and he take a citizenship, he took an oath, and the oath he said in the oath that I'm willing to bear arm to protect America, etc. <clears throat> but and then <clears throat> he believe in the Quran, saying that you cannot be friend to them. Let me drink something. Hold on. <clears throat> So how you believe in the Quran where it says you cannot be in peace with them you cannot be friend to them in the same time you are going to swear and take a, a, an oath that you will be an American who bear arm to defend America that's not allowed that is the taqiyya against non-muslims in the same time the taqiyya against Islam is what we saw here Allah himself allowed it and because Muhammad is a corrupt man, he allowed corruption inside his religion. So he allowed Muslims to say that or to convert to Islam, even though they are not believing in Islam, even if though their faith, they have no faith in Muhammad, neither in Allah. You know, when you say, for not yet has faith enter your heart, but ye, if you obey Allah and his messenger, you will not, etc. Okay, so so what Muhammad saying to them, okay, you don't believe in Allah. You don't believe in Muhammad. Obey me and I will let it go. I don't care really you believe in me or not. I know it's taqiyya. I know you are protecting yourself from my sword. Remember Muhammad said, I've been ordered to kill all mankind. And the Muslim, they say to you, know, it says to fight all mankind. In Arabic, it says, I've been ordered to uqatil. Uqatil is mean to fight, to kill. Kill, not to spank them by a shoe or by a stick. So I've been commanded to kill all mankind until they justify or testify that there is no God but Allah and there is no prophet but Muhammad and they eat our falafel and they, they drink our camel urine and if they practice our salat and they pray to the direction of the Kaaba and they piss as I piss and they shake their penis three times etc if they do all of that I will not shed their blood as you see it in the front of your eyes so Muhammad you don't care really if you believe or not or what he cared that you say shahada you surrender to the devil of Muhammad he want to steal your will from you. And the rest is not important. You obey me. You obey the devil. You do what he want. But you believe or you don't believe is the last of his worry. Because now he guaranteed that you are going to go to hell. He buy from you your blood and your property in exchange of selling yourself out to the devil. What Muhammad he want from you? Pay him money. Convert and agree that he is a prophet and his God is the only God to believe in, which is mean him at the end of the day. And do exactly as he said to you to do. And who the rest, who care? You don't believe in Allah. Who care? Faith did not enter your heart. Who care? Who need your faith? Say to the Arab, to the Bedouin, if you don't convert, we will kill you all. The Arab, they thought about it. Okay, hold on. Don't kill us. We are going to say we believe. We will say that. Okay, we will say that. Don't kill us. Muhammad, he said to them, okay, listen, I know you said you believe, but I know that you don't believe. I know that you said that because you don't want me to kill you. The Bedouin say, we believe. Say, you believe not. But only say, only say. Muhammad is telling them what to say. Say, we are Muslims. You are allowed to be a person who don't believe in Allah, imagine, who don't believe in Muhammad as a prophet, but you are allowed to say, I'm a Muslim. Muhammad is the founder of Taqiyya, the founder of lying and hypocrisy. He don't care even if you don't believe in him. 
All what he care is to surrender, for he is the devil. Are you getting my point? If there is any Muslim here, he don't, uh, you know, the Abdul, he keeps saying he want to call, and he's saying he cannot call. This guy is a, is, a, is a kid. What you cannot call? Why you cannot call? Why you cannot call? Give me a reason. So you have a Skype, but you cannot call. Why? If there is any Muslim have an objection, who have who is a Muslim who have the courage and the knowledge to give me a call? Call me, my friend, because remember, if you defend Islam, Allah will increase the size of your penis. Don't you ha want to have an endless penis as Muhammad he promised? I mean, imagine how stupid this stupid cult is to the point you say to people that if you believe in me, I will give you an endless penis. Actually, this is scary. You live in Chicago and your penis in Beijing and the Chinese are cutting it parts and imported as pieces leather for shoes in USA. And then you get a shoe, it says made in China from the leather of penis, a Muslim penis. Endless penis. Are you to worry about the ants? What if your penis go inside the jungles of Brazil? Do you know how dangerous the ants there and they would do what they would do to your penis go in between the bushes? What kind of religion this religion is? Endless penis. I mean, you have to be endless, it's stupid to believe in such an endless penis. I mean, what is your mind? Where's your brain? And the funny, the Muslim, they said to you, this hadith is daif. I mean, daif or not daif, who care? Daif, da daif, by the way, daif. The story of Daif is amazing. The, the brother, this hadith, anything you say to them, they say to you is Daif. Islam is Daif. When a man, he said to Muhammad that your penis is not working. What Muhammad, he said. Hello? 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 Are you there? Uh, uh, Abdul, before you call me, you forgot to say the password, Inshallah. If you don't say Inshallah, Allah will not let you speak to me. Do you remember the story of David or Solomon, sorry, where in the hadith he wanted to have sex with 99 women, he forgot to say Inshallah? He wanted to make them all brethren, and then he could not make any of them brethren. Why? Because he forgot to say, inshallah. Only one of them, she, she, she delivered a son, and he was half man, as they claim. Why? Because he forgot to say, inshallah. So please, before you call me, say, inshallah. Let us try to call him. Answer Abdul. Okay, forget wow. this guy is playing games. Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? Anyone? How many of you got my books? Six and Allah. How many of you get my books, the new books, Six and Allah? Which part you like more, variant number one or variant number two? Which one is better for you? Number two? Mm. All right. Yeah, but number one, by the way, remember, it's it's really important to have because it is, it's kind of 
presentation for number two so you can get a whole image about what what they have there <clears throat> Repentance and the Quran. Hmm. My friend, Islam does not have anything to do with repentance. It's a, it's a joke. It's a lie. And let me prove it to you. <coughs> and thank you, my friend, for asking the question. First of all, what, what is the meaning of to, to repent? What, what it does mean to repent? Repent is you agree that this is sin. And you say you speak to God asking for forgiveness. And you make like, you know, let us say, I will, I will do my best to fight the sin, right? This is what repents mean. Okay. Let me show you what is repents in Islam. It's a joke. If we go to chapter 2, verse number 37, it says, فَتَلَقَّ آدَمَ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ What a joke. Chapter 2, verse number 37. You can choose any translation you wish. Simply, this is the story of Adam. Adam, he repent to Allah. He repent. All right. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. And then Allah, he forgive him. After Allah, he forgive him. What happened? Anyone remember? Now, Adam, he repent. Allah forgive Adam. What happened after? Who remember? Who remember? What happened? Allah forgave him, right? Allah, he forgave Adam. Okay. What happened? After that, he kicked him out of heaven. <laughs> I thought if you are forgiven, you stay in heaven. So Adam, he commits sin. He asked Allah for forgiveness. Allah accept to forgive him. And as a reward, Allah kicked him out of heaven. Any Muslim can explain this madness? How I forgive you, but yet I'm going to kill you. Any Abdul? But any, by the way, anyone remember how Allah he forgave Adam? Anyone remember how Allah forgave Adam? Let me see if I can find the hadith. The story says, uh, that when Allah created Adam, and then Adam, he broke the order of Allah, which is a story Muhammad, he stole from other belief, and we know where you're from. Allah get angry from Adam, and he decide to cast him out of heaven. So Adam, he said to Allah, please, please forgive me for the sake of Muhammad. Allah, he looked at Adam, he said like, what? What, what, what? Uh, Muhammad? How you know about Muhammad? And I did not create him yet. How you know? Adam said, Allah, when you created me and you breathed into me, I sneezed and I look up to the sky. I saw your chair and I saw the Shahada. It says, no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. At this moment, I noticed that must be Muhammad is the most beloved person to you. And this is why I ask you to forgive me in the name of Muhammad. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Any Abdul? Any Abdul have a comment? So Allah, he forgive Adam. Because Adam, he saw the name of Muhammad on the throne of Allah. Let 
Let me show you the hadith. Let me find it in English. Hold on. Just to give you an idea about the stupidity of this cult and how much they worship this man, his name is Muhammad. They worship him. Not they don't worship Allah. Allah is not even exist in Islam. In Islam, there is only one God, his name is Muhammad, which means the praised one, which means God. Look with me at this website. This is a Muslim website, it's called Rasulullah.info. All right. <clears throat> Allah, he named Muhammad himself before he was named by the people. Who is the one who gave Muhammad his name? Allah. That's it. Do you see it? Okay. How Allah bestowed honor on etc. Sayyidina Muhammad, which means our, our master Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which means may Allah pray on him and salute him by giving pre audience etc to his prophethood also purity and lineage blah 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 okay hold on the creation of the blessed soul <clears throat> hmm. in sahih muslim the prophet saw said allah wrote his dest the destination of the creation 50000 years before he created the heaven and the earth and here, for your asking question about repentance in Islam, Muslims, they believe in repentance, but it's a contradiction for what they believe in the same time, because if your destination is what is going to decide what you did and what you will do, what repentance will do. And we made many videos before where Muhammad, he said, what is written by Allah will overcome what is written or made by you. And then those who uh, was going to go to heaven, they will go to hell. Maybe... Brother Phil, he can post the reference in the text so you can read it. Where Muhammad saying clearly that at the end of the day is not what you do will make you go to heaven or to hell. It is Allah who wrote your fate before He created you. It's your fate. Now here it says, He created His fate of the people fifty thousand years before He created the heaven and the earth, and His throne was on the water. Okay, how how there is no earth and there is no heaven, but there is water. Hmm. Okay. And among the things, and by the way, his throne was above the water. This is taken from the Old Testament, but this is because Muhammad is a thief. He made it look funny because you just say there's no heaven, there's no earth, but yet there's water. This is not what the Bible says. Let us continue. And among the things that have been written in the Dekar, which is the mother of the book, if, 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 if the Dekar is the book, a mother of book, okay, let's continue. That the Master Muhammad, Allah pray on him and salute him, the seal of the Prophet. I mean, this guy he will spend the day saying the Master Muhammad seal of Prophet. Go to the topic, man. Okay, I ask Abu Jafar, how did Prophet Allah see that? <clears throat> yeah, here actually there's some hadith. Let us see which one is the one about Adam. He looked at the throne. <clears throat> Hold on. All right. And it all has also been narrated that when Adam has left paradise, he saw written on the leg of the throne and on every spot in paradise the name of Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Guys, the name of Muhammad is in every corner of the paradise. There's the highway there, it's called the highway of Muhammad. The exit is called the exit of Muhammad. The bridge, it's called the bridge of Muhammad. The grocery store, it's always the grocery store of Muhammad. Muhammad the grocery store. The supermarket, Muhammad supermarket. Gaza the station, Muhammad supermarket, Gaza the station. I mean, everything in bar, the bar is called the bar of Muhammad. The women, the prostitute, the company of the prostitution, Prostitution of Muhammad. Gambling casino, Muhammad casino. Muhammad Loto. Muhammad Trump. I mean, his name is everywhere. 
in every spot in paradise. Do you see it? I'm not saying things. I'm not, I'm not making things up. It's in front of you. Does it say in every spot in the paradise or I'm making things up? Huh? Do you see it? And look, the name of Muhammad is beside the name of Allah. And you know, the funny, the Muslim, they say that the Christian are mushrikeen because they associate the name of God with the name of Jesus. But as you see, they are the mushrikeen. The name of Muhammad is in every corner in the heaven. There's only two names in heaven. Muhammad Allah, Allah Muhammad, Muhammad Allah. You go in the bathroom in heaven, you will find the bathroom of Muhammad. Toilet paper of Muhammad. You take the toilet paper to clean your bum, it says Muhammad. Muhammad name is written everywhere. Anywhere. You want to drink whiskey in heaven? It says the whiskey of Muhammad. In the cover, in the, in, in the everywhere. You want to go and buy some bleach? The bleach of Muhammad. Shampoo, shampoo of Muhammad. You want to buy a cucumber? It is, says Muhammad. You cut the cucumber inside, there's Muhammad. Zucchini, watermelon, Allah and Muhammad inside them. Actually, I saw many, many uh, uh, pictures in Google made by Muslims Photoshop. They are saying, look, Alhamdulillah, inside the watermelon, the name of Allah. The name of a prophet Muhammad, alhamdulillah. You know, there's a actually I saw a tree is praying to Allah too. You know. So look what happened here. So Muhammad, uh, Adam, sorry, Adam, he saw the name of Muhammad in every corner and on the leg of the throne of Allah. And then he asked Allah, look what he said to him. He said, O oh Lord, who is Muhammad? Allah answered, Look at this conversation. I mean, how come Allah is answering Adam about who is Muhammad, but he didn't want to answer me? Okay, let me ask the same question. Oh, Lord Allah, who is Muhammad? Let us wait for 10 years, 10,000 years, 10 billion years. Allah will never answer. But he answered only Adam, man. Must be important, Adam. Very important. Allah answered. He said, he is your son. Adam, he look what? Who oh, we're not. It's not for him. I would not have created you. <laughs> then Adam said, oh, oh Allah, for the sake of this son, have mercy on his father. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, boy, boy. You see, it makes sense. Allah, He cannot have Adam. He, um, Allah, he, he, don't, he don't want to Adam. He want Muhammad. The purpose of creating Adam, it was Muhammad. But because Allah, He been taught that you cannot have Muhammad unless you create his father first. Makes sense. I mean, you want Adam to exist for any reason than the reason of the existence of Muhammad. And do you want Allah to create Muhammad right away? No way. That will not make a drama. We have we need a drama, you know, like a story, Adam, Eve, blah, blah, blah. And then Muhammad come to save the whole world. So if not Muhammad, I will not create you. So Allah he said to Adam that. And Adam he said to him, Allah, please. As long as Adam is created for the sake of his son, can you forsake, have mercy in the father of that son? Wow. I mean, that's deep. In different hadith here, read this hadith with me. Umar ibn Khattab said on Muhammad, when uh, that Muhammad said, when Adam committed a mistake, which means sin, he said, Oh Allah, I ask you for the sake of the our Lord Muhammad. 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to forgive me what Adam he asked for forgiveness in the name of Muhammad Allah was like what like what what Allah is WT by the way Allah is WT that's like you know uh, surrounded with uh, turbulence Allah as WT said to him how do you know about our master Muhammad Allah is saying about our master Muhammad Allah said to Adam how you know about our master Muhammad do we have any Muslim here Allah said that Allah he called Muhammad our master our Lord Allah called Muhammad our Lord Muhammad if there's any Muslim in the bushes let us continue let us continue and then he says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah praying on him and says who is Allah when I have not created him yet so look at Allah said to Muhammad to, to Adam what 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 you are asking me for forgiveness in the name of Muhammad how you know about Muhammad Habibi how you know about Muhammad how you know I did not create Muhammad yet Allah was like what the heck are you sure where you get this information from I don't know at that moment if I am Allah I would think like maybe Adam he did hack the computer of Allah he got like all the files there and he knew what he's planning for etc I mean Allah was like here was like what the heck how Adam he knew what is behind this hmm something fishy here and by the way Allah is not all-knowing I mean why Allah is even asking Adam how you know about Muhammad I thought Allah he knows what is in your head anyway anyway so Allah, he asked Muhammad, Adam, how you know about Muhammad and yet I have not created him yet? Adam answered, he said, because, because, oh my Allah, when you created me with your hand, I'm sure, I'm so glad with his hand, not something else, and blew into me with your spirit, I looked up and I saw Written on the legs of the throne, la la halalaha Muhammad Zulallah. What the heck? In the thrones, a throne of Allah in the leg, it's written the Shahada. Allah, He wrote the Shahada in the leg of it is unbelievable. This is the first couch I saw. It have the Shahada on it. It is the couch of Allah. Why Allah He wrote the Shahada in His couch? Let us take options. First of all, He could not find better name to put it in His chair. I think all the Muslims they agree. He's a child molester. He's a criminal. He's a thief. He's a killer. He's a liar. He's been accused by Muslim of stealing underwear. I mean, obviously He is the best. Hmm. Number two. Allah, he wrote the Shahada on his throne because he have a bad memory. And he might forget who is Muhammad. He wants something to remind him. Every morning, Allah, he spent the most of the morning climbing his chair because his chair is so high and he's so short. And I can prove it. I know that. I know that. You did not attach any name to yours except that of the most beloved of your creation. Look at this answer, how strong it is. Then Allah, he said, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh mommy. Oh mommy Muhammadi. Oh mommy blue. I have to agree. I have to agree with you. I mean, Muhammad is the most beloved name to the point. This is why Allah he wrote his name. What is the most beloved name in the whole world? Muhammad. 
So what Allah do? He made a chair for himself and he wrote the name of Muhammad. This is very logical. Put yourself in the foot in the shoes of Allah. And the most beloved name to you is Muhammad. What you worry you will put his name. Make it a tattoo, it's haram. Allah cannot make a tattoo. And where Allah will make a tattoo over his leg, he have only one leg. That will be funny. So he said to himself, what I can make a tattoo, where I can make a tattoo, and what I will write in the tattoo, what I will put in the tattoo. So he decided to put a tattoo on the leg of his chair, which is the leg of Allah. Unbelievable. That's astonishing story. Actually, I feel like I want to convert to Islam now. Who can resist this amazing religion? Huh? There's a guy, he said he pissed in my Bible. Well, don't forget to piss in the name of Muhammad because you Muslims claim that the name of your prophet is there. Go ahead. Make a video, please. Don't forget, please, to make a video. I want you to make a video and you are pissing there. The Quran says that the name of Ahmad is in the Bible. Piss on it. I understand your motivation. Go ahead. Make 10 videos, 50 videos. I want you to do that every morning. Before lunch and before dinner, which means your breakfast. Because Muslims, they claim they are fasting Ramadan, but the fact, oh, what they do, they switch the meal. I mean, I never heard of such a corrupt, false fasting as the fasting of the Muslims. Oh, what they do, they switch the meal. The breakfast is afternoon. That's all. You don't do fasting. Switching meal religion. You Christians worship idols. Shame on you. Muslims, but, but we don't kiss stones. It's you who kiss stones. Stupid idiot. This stone is a living stone, is the right hand of Allah. Uh, oh, okay. So we are the one who worship idols, but you are the one who kiss a stone, and it is the right hand of Allah. And yes, it is a beautiful hand. Actually, according to science, this hand is coming from the galaxy 077 James Bond. Do we have Abdul? You write the name of Allah and the name of Muhammad in every corner in heaven, every spot, which means I can't even find a spot to sit on it. I go to heaven, I want to sit in a spot. I clean the dust, it says in the spot, Muhammad, Allah. Like what? In every spot? I mean, this is not even fair. Where I'm going to sit now? <clears throat> Any Abdul? And masking the fool, just make a new, uh, new, uh, new accounts, my friend. Don't worry about it. They will do that always. Do we have any Abdul want to say something? Imagine you go and you marry a woman and then you find, she take off her clothes, you find the name of Muhammad in her leg. My beautiful wife, what is that in your leg? A tattoo. What is that tattoo? La 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 Muhammad Azulullah. Like what, what, what? All of this? What, 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 what is that? La 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 Muhammad Azulullah. All of this in your leg? And why? And why it's written in this language? What is that language? Is that Urdu? It's Arabic. Do you speak Arabic? No. So why you write the tattoo in every spot in your body? Because Muhammad is the most beloved man for Allah. Make love? Makes sense. I mean, where do you want a name of Muhammad to be? One spot only? In every spot. Not even a single spot, the name of Muhammad is not there. 
You open the refrigerator in the paradise, you find Muhammad. You cut the cake inside, it says Muhammad. You eat phrase, it says Muhammad phrase. I mean, that's astonishing. Muhammad is just a prophet, is not God, but yet his name in every spot. Allah, he spent his lifetime printing the name of Muhammad in every spot in paradise. Allah, he got a stamp in his hand. You know, guys, do you know, do you know what they call it? This one, uh, the, the, the one you like, like a stick, you jump in it. Anyone remember what their name? It's like a stick, you hold it with your hands and you put your two feet and you jump. It's have a rasur, you know? So look like Allah, he have a stamp in this rasur at the end of it. It says, Muhammad, Rasulullah, Muhammad, La ilaha illa Muhammad, La ilaha illa Muhammad. Are the guy in your heart? Okay, let us see what is going to be in your wallet soon. <laughs> let us see if you are going to eat the bread, my friend. Erdogan is taking you to bankruptcy in our heart. You are right. I want to hear that from you a year from now. In six months from now, in our heart, right? Yeah. The puppet of the NATO. The puppet of the Jews, the puppet of a Trump, the puppet of Putin, and in the same time he claimed to be the Muslim president, Tayyip Erdogan. He's a puppy. And now he announced, and the Al Qaeda announced him to be a kafir. Here we go. This is the end of marriage between Al Qaeda and Erdogan. Do we have any Muslim here? He was hosting Al Qaeda for the last seven years, having sex with ISIS for the last seven years. Look what he did. You see, this is the nature of Islam. Muslims they betray each other. Who is the one who betray ISIS? Erdogan. They were his best of friends. He armed them. He smuggled weapon to them. He smuggled fighters coming from around the world, through his borders, legally or officially. And then Erdogan, he sold them. Same exactly he did with Al-Qaeda. Seven years he is training them, arming them, money coming from Qatar, weapon, etc. Just last week, he sold them. Now, he have Syrian terrorists, who they call themselves a free Syrian army. They are under the command of Erdogan, more than 40,000 of them. In few months, he will sell them too. Everything for sale. Turkey for sale. Who wants a citizenship? Erdogan, he will give it to you if you buy a falafel sandwich in Turkey. Refute the video of Radish. Who oh, is Radish, my friend? This guy is a kid. We, we, we burned him long time ago. Radish. Radish, radush shubahat. <laughs> this guy don't even knows, don't speak Arabic. Not an idiot. Do we have any Abdul? Who is Abdul? And those Muslims who want to make videos to supposedly claiming knowledge, why they don't call us? Why they don't call us? My videos are all over, my friend. Everybody download my videos. <laughs> Do we have any Abdul? And by the way, the only one remember that name is him. This guy, he changed his name and he go, why you don't debate Reddu uh, Shubuat? Who's Reddu Shubuat? Where is he? It's like Nader Ahmad, you know, Nader Ahmad, nobody remember his name, so he changed his name. He says, why you don't debate Nader Ahmad? <laughs> you know, there is once the Muslims, they made a debate, a Muslim guy, his name, I think, uh, I forgot which one of them, Zawadi, Bawadi, uh, I don't know, something like that. He made a debate with Sam Shamoon. Do you guys remember Sam Shamoon? Do you remember, you know, that, that debate? Let us speak to this gentleman and see what uh, we will continue.
Hello? Hey, Christian Prince. Hey, You're my speaking friend, with. How are you, brother? I'm You're fine. speaking with Rob Christian. How are you? I'm very fine. How, how is everything with you? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. God bless you, my friend. God bless everyone in the room. I hope everyone is doing fine. Thank you. Uh, it was a long time ago that I spoke to you, right, uh, yeah, Christian Prince? Yeah, well, you, you call once a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm kind of busy, you know. You know what I mean, right? Uh, um, Christian Prince, I have uh, uh, something uh, to ask you about uh, two verses in the Quran, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, if you go to chapter 23, ayah 20, chapter okay. 23, ayah 20, it says, Pur Sina, right? Hmm. In that ayah. Hmm. And if we go uh, to chapter 95, ayah 2, it says, Watur Sinin. Hmm. You have Tur Sina <clears throat> and you have Tur Sinin. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Well, uh, first of all, you know, you know, the Quran is made to be like a rap music, right? Of course, it's a good rap uh, song, right? Yeah. So what Muhammad always do, most likely, he changed the name to make it fit with the tone. He play with it. Yep. There's nothing is called by both names you mentioned is wrong. There's no such a thing. Yeah, because tour uh, is an Aramaic word, of course, yeah, right? Uh, we're not talking about the, uh, the word tour. We are talking about the name of Sina. Yeah. So if this is Sina, this name is wrong. Yeah, Sinin is years in Arabic, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So how how Muhammad he uh, uh, if you go actually in the Quran chapter twenty three, it says it says Sina, right? Yes. Okay. How Sina became Sinin? I don't know. I think Muhammad he uh, he forgot about the Arabic. Maybe I don't know. No, he did not forget, but simply uh, a Quran is copy paste between, wrong, right? Quran is between his hands as yes. uh, as uh, as a game to play with. It just uh, he's, he's this guy trying to make a rabbi music, and then he can he can make sina sinin just for the sake of the tone of the. Uh, so so it could uh, rhyme, uh, right? Because they say uh, the the Arab people, the Muslim people, they say. Uh, uh, it's a wonderful uh, linguistic miracle, right? And he's playing with words, right? That's it. Well, there's no actually. You know, if you go in the whole Quran, you will they will find that the Quran, uh, it's the important about it for for Muhammad is to make the sound, not the meaning. Yes. And this is why, if you read the verses, the same verses you are reading. I mean, you read verse number one, verse number two, verse number three, and you continue, and you find there's no meaning of the of the of the verses. As an example, if you go uh, in chapter 18, in chapter yeah. 18, how many stories there are mentioned? I mean, what, what those stories are about and what is the connection between? There's no connection. No. You know, what no. is the connection between that there's a, a God, he don't have a son, and then we speak about the seven sleepers. Yeah. And then we speak about Alexander the Great. And then we speak uh, about uh, a, a dog who is guarding the cave, and this, and, and some they say they are five, and their dog is six, and some they say they are six, and their dog is number seven, and some they say they are four, and their dog is number five. So what is the number? Or oh, what yeah. Muhammad is trying is just to fill up. It's like somebody want to talk. He is required to talk, but it's not important what he is saying. He just want to fill the space. Yes, you know? and so all of a sudden, the angel, the angel, of course, in the original story, it was an angel, not a dog, right? It's an angel, yes, this is the Aramaic, but because yeah. the, Arab are, the, the Arab are disconnected with the original story in Aramaic language, so the word Kali Ahom in the Quran, wrongly, actually, even the interpretation says that, in the Quran, yeah. the word Kali Ahom, because it's written wrong, people, they thought it is Kalb Ahom, but the fact yes. it is Kali Ahom. And all of yes. us, we knew that the Muslim believe that dogs are unholy. So how yep. Allah is praising a dog and saying he is a guardian for them. And, yeah. how, and how a dog can guard people from an army. <laughs> Remember, the story is what? The story about a king, he want to kill them. So now you are telling me a dog will stop the army of the king? I want to get that dog. <laughs> well, I think I think it's a super dog, uh, Christian yeah. Prince. But everything there, you know... Uh, 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 everything in the Quran you will see especially for those who speak Arabic you know it's about uh, trying to to preserve that the last word in the verse have the same sound it's not important the meaning 
the important is the sound yeah but for those who, who don't speak arabic they don't notice what is uh, because the the word in english will not appear the same it's going to be translation you know yeah but in arabic you will notice that muhammad he want to keep let us say in this chapter the letter a at the end a huda yeah you know so in order to keep the letter a at the end he have to put the last word he have to put a the word have end with the letter a so in order yep. to do that he have to sacrifice the meaning and finding a word which end with a it doesn't matter what it is and this is why <laughs> the verses have nothing they are not uh, they are not in connection yeah a christian prince uh, for another example if you go for example to chapter two when it says uh al yahuda wa nasara wal sabi'i then you go to chapter 5 you, you will get al yahud wa nasar wal sabiun and then you go to surah al hajj then you will see again uh, the sabiin so is it sabiun or is it sabiin of course the right arabic should be sabiin right yeah. see, so it's the, the reason i don't talk about those because <laughs> if i try to explain to people who don't speak arabic it's useless you know i, yeah. I don't usually talk about those things because uh, uh, i mean how you can explain the difference you just mentioned now for people who heard you they, they understand nothing you know? Yeah, they don't. Yeah. They don't understand. You have uh, to speak Arabic. Yeah. Yeah. Th those those topics can be only discussed only with those who speak Arabic and they can read and 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 and, uh, and they know grammar too. Not only they read and write. So yeah, but, yeah basically, that. yeah, yeah, basically, um, if if you are looking into science, of course, there are many many scientific uh, uh, mistakes in the Quran, but you also have the grammatical mistakes, and you can find many of them, right? I Many of them. the word Quran itself is a mistake unless it is Aramaic. Why? Yes. Because there is nothing is called in Arabic is Quran. You know, in Arabic, anyone who knows Arabic, as an example, when you say "akala uh, yakulu," uh, "aklan," not "aklanan." <laughs> so, "qara'a yakra'u Quran." It doesn't make sense, but now because they are used to it, you know. Yeah. It's true, you know, the word Quran comes from the Aramaic word uh, Quriona, for example. Quriona, uh, or Quriona, yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I speak Aramaic, and let me give you an example. When we say Quriona Tfaul Shliho, that means the book or the message of uh, the Apostle Paul, right? So yeah. Quriona, is, it's it's an Aramaic word, right? And this is so, exactly what Quran is. Quran is a Qira'a min Kitab. Is reading yes, from exactly. the book. Well, you remember when Waraq ibn Nufal he created what Muhammad he called it the gospel in Arabic. You remember the hadith? Yeah. It's, this is the this is the Quran. Qira'a min kitab. Like even in Arabic churches when they say Qira'a min kitab al-amal uh, rusul uh, uh, Qira'a. It's the same in in Arabic. It's the same. Actually, the, the Arabic is trying to copy the Arabic where it says Qur'a or it uh, you know Qur'ana uh, or to 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 read a reading from the book of etc so yes. the quran is a copy of this aramaic word which is which it mean reading from the book of this is not a book by itself this is yeah. a copy from the book this is reading yeah. from the book of etc it's true what do you think about before uh, the the quran it became uh, you know with the dots and the tashkil right uh, I think the original Quran uh, was Aramaic. Don't you agree with that? What's your your opinion about it? Well, uh, let us say the original Quran was a, a big part of it Aramaic, but it was mixed still with other words from other languages, because Muhammad yeah. is remember he is the fruit of many religions in the same time, but obviously yeah. the biggest impact in Islam it was the Aramaic. Yeah, like uh, words like Sundas and Istakbara and, and you know, th all these words are everything, everything. Those are Persian, the word Rahman, the word, the word Rahman, the word Rahim, those are have nothing to do. You see, when uh, 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 when the Arab they say to Muhammad, uh, when first time he said the word Rahman, the Arab they were wondering, like, you know, who is Rahman? Yeah. The only Rahman we know is Rahman al-Yamama, and this is a guy who speak and he claimed that he, his name is Rahman and his yes. his name is Rahman yes. and his God is Rahman. So yeah. who is the Rahman he is talking about? They said, okay, uh, Muhammad used to worship only Allah, and now he is worshiping two gods, Allah yeah, that's sure. and <laughs> Rahman. You know, and then yeah. Muhammad uh, uh, he said to them he wanted to answer them about the accusation because now he have two names, and where where this name is coming from? Simply he. Uh, 
the guy, the, the Rahman al Yamama, he sent him a letter uh, uh, trying to uh, argue with him about why he is a prophet and why he is not. So he said to him, In the name of a Rahman, Muhammad, he liked the name, and he decided from now on to use it. So look what Muhammad yeah. said in the Quran in chapter 17, verse 110. It says, Because the Arab, they, they were questioning him, Why you are you using a Rahman? So he said, Say, in verse number 110, say, Call upon Allah or call upon Rahman by whatever name you call upon him, it is it is well for him belong all the most beautiful names. So what Muhammad did here, he liked the name. Suddenly he start calling Allah a Rahman. And the proof here that Muhammad is a false prophet from this verse is very easy. Because if you go in every chapter in the Quran, what is the beginning of the chapter except at Tawbah? Bismillah Rahman Rahim, right? Yes. Okay. How Bismillah Rahman Rahim, and this is the first time Muhammad received the word Rahman. <laughs> Disaster. <laughs> you know, because now is the first time. Even the interpretation says the Arab they were wondering why he's saying Rahman, which means this is the first time they hear him saying it. You know. Okay. So if this is the first time, well, this is mean Muhammad before that chapter he never knows what a Rahman is. Yes. Go to the book of Asbab al Nuzul or the book, sorry, the, 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 let's search for the books by, by the Quran by revelation, and you will find that this verse Muhammad he received many, like almost the half of the Quran, and yet he don't have a Rahman. So, how a Rahman exists in every, in every chapter in the Quran today? Yeah, there is another interesting uh, thing that you uh, just mentioned, you know, just to, to expose Islam more and to show you from the Quran that the Quran is corrupted. If you go, Maybe you can show the, uh, this ayah to the people. In, uh, they can they can uh, see it on website. If you go, for example, to Quran.com, and you go to chapter fifteen uh, and then ayah eighty-seven, you will see in the Quran itself uh, it says al uh, al mathani. That means the seven most uh, repeated verse, which is of course al fatiha wa yeah. al Quran. So why did they put al fatiha in the Quran when it says there clearly in in that ayah? That the Quran should be separated from uh, uh, Al Fatiha. So, al you know, it's Al Mathani yeah. simply, you see, because uh, Muhammad he came with a lot of stupidity. Remember, yeah. uh, the repeated, the one that says Al Mathani, Mathani means repeated. Yes. And he says there are seven. The Muslims, many of them, they are confused about what it's mean. Some of them they say that this is the Quran which is sent in seven letters, but they are not repeated. No, it's the so Fatiha. How it can be? Then, some they say those are the uh, uh, seven chapters in the Quran, which is the one, like you know, they, they try to name them, but then it doesn't work because, as you said, it says well, Quran, which means it cannot be part of the Quran because if it is yeah. the Quran, then there's no need to say and the Quran. Yeah. So, to make it simple, Al Fatiha was the same as the prayer, Our Father, Art of Heaven. Yes, the Christian he stole it, he changed it. Yeah, Muhammad, yeah. He, you know, he wanted to have a prayer like the same as the Christians. If you put them side by side, this is a chapter and the chapter of uh, and the, uh, our father out of heaven, you will see how much similar they are. All Muhammad changed is a little bit of, of uh, the words, you know, to make it look like not it's the same exactly, but it's the same. Yes, you know, yeah, all copy paste, man. Yeah. That's like when it says, please don't make it the same as the, the cursed the Jews and the lost Christians, right? Okay, yeah, if you go in uh, our father out of heaven, you know, don't enter us into t temptation or trial, right? It's the same, yes. But yeah. here, all what he did, it says, those who they are cursed and those who they are lost, yeah, amazing, it's the same, <laughs> you know. And then, yeah. uh, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, how Allah is talking, he says, and you know, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Yeah, understand. and Ibn Mas'ud he refused to add this to the Quran. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Krish Chris. I don't want to take uh, m much time from you. Maybe you have uh, Muslim callers. Oh, uh, my friend, thank you for we'll calling. Call yeah, thank you too. And um, thank, uh, I want to thank the people uh, who are supporting you. Keep doing that, guys, and uh, the truth will be uh, prevail. And Jesus is Lord, guys. Amen. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Thank you, my friend. Thank my, you for calling. Bye bye. Thank you. Do we have any Muslim would like to call? <laughs> any Muslim would like to call me? Who is a Muslim would like to call? This is my change to the Muslims. Call me.
and you choose a chapter and you tell me find me a mistake in it what do you think guys any chapter from the page number one in the Quran to the last page of the Quran you choose the chapter and you challenge me to find you a mistake in it any Muslim want to do that you see how confident I am that every chapter in the Quran itself it's a mistake not only I will find you a mistake the chapter itself is a mistake who is a Muslim want to do that no Waraka is not a Christian Waraka is a Nasara Nasara he joined the Jews cult which was Nasara same as Jehovah's Witnesses I'm lucky guys honestly I'm lucky every time I go somewhere in the bus I find Abdul next to me I go in the street I find Jehovah's Witnesses in the front of me I mean wherever I go I find somebody sitting next to me and he's either Abdul or Jehovah's Witnesses and the poor guy who is sitting next to me he have no idea who is this guy I should uh, I should have my camera always on so we can record those uh, uh, funny events happened who is a Muslim want to call me I cannot find a mistake in the Quran for sure I cannot find one they will find me <laughs> the mistakes will find me the Quran itself is a mistake who is the Muslim want to accept the challenge you see the Muslim they keep saying the Quran is full of miracles who is a Muslim want to call me and show me a scientific miracle? Any one of your choice. Anyone? Okay, Loris, you can call. As long as there is no Abdul, what we can do. Go ahead, call me. <coughs> Let me turn the light on. <coughs> Go ahead, my friend. You can call me. There's no Muslims. We give up. If you go on YouTube and you search for scientific miracles in the Quran, you will find endless numbers of them. Not a single one is a truthful. Hello? Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? I do. Go Hi. Ahead. Uh, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Um, until now, I'm fine. Let us see what you will say. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm a Christian, not a Muslim. And oh, it doesn't matter I... because, you see, I'm afraid always that somebody will ask me a question which is very embarrassing. No, that will not happen. Oh, please do. Have... <laughs> Okay, I'm just joking. <laughs> memory, I never have ever known anyone who... I mean, how you remember all these hadiths, I have no idea. I don't remember but... them. They remember me. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> they follow you. <laughs> um, well, I, w I have like a couple questions. Um, sure. I heard um, last week that um, I was, I don't remember, it was on a YouTube channel or something, two things that I've never heard before. And I think the first one was, from the Ayatollah Khomeini's writings, mm -hmm. I'm not 100 certain, but they said that it was halal to sodomize livestock, mm -hmm. immediately after your orgasm. Sorry, yeah. you slaughter them, and then it said that that you can't sell them to your people in your own village, but you can sell them to other villages. See, because they are decent. Like suppose now they are decent people. Yeah. You cannot sell them to the people in your village. Let somebody yeah, else right. from different village who do not know what happened. <laughs> That's bestiality. I, I mean, is there like, sources in their scripture that say that's okay or is that just Ayatollah's well, you know the, <clears throat> you see Islam is based on two things based on what is called Quran which is supposedly mm. uh, the holy scriptures for the Muslims and based on the hadith now even the hadith right. it have holy hadith, hadith yeah. too there is something in, in the hadith it's called holy so the Muslims in order to uh, uh, reach into uh, decisions to make in life regarding any issues they have to go back in some stories which happen either in the time of Muhammad or after 
And based on that story, they make decisions, as you see, that you can have that and you can do this. If you have my books, which is the, the last one, Six and Allah, you will find a lot of reference. And based on those reference, Muslims, they make decision. Right. So, so those decisions, when when the when the sheikh, he say, you can do that. As an example, in, in if you have the books, Six and Allah, you will see where it says that if you have sex with your wife during the hajj, your hajj is not valid. But if you have sex with animal, it's it's valid. What kind of crazy religion? If you have yeah. sex with an animal, it is valid. Yeah. And Allah is all, uh, all forgiving. It's okay. But if you have sex with his wife, his hajj is not valid. Which one is more more sinful and more ugly? I mean, well, at, least, at least at least his wife. She is a woman. She's a human being like him. So having yeah. sex with a donkey will not destroy your hajj. But having sex with the wife will make your hedges uh, bad but we can yeah. do you know? <laughs> so i yeah i don't i'm going to get your books um sex and a lot of i haven't got them yet but do you know the reference I mean, if you don't know it off the top of your head it's okay but if you have a like a, a hadith that actually says that it's okay or is it more well, those those are not really uh, it's not really a hadith as much it is that i say uh, um Stop. Let us say like scholar how rule? to explain to you. No, based on hadith, which is not necessarily the hadith saying that exactly. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. So, like, you know, there's something in Islam is called ijtihad. So, let us say Muhammad, in one story, he said, if somebody have sex with an animal, kill the animal. All right? Okay. Mm -hmm. In different hadith, it says, if somebody did sat with the animal, uh, uh, set it a different place. Okay, so now we have two stories. We match them together and we come with a decision that if you have sex with this animal, what do you do? You kill him and you sell him in a different place. So it's not necessarily to have in the same hadith the same thing. So sort of like uh, like using different hadiths and coming yeah, to, to the come logic. Yeah, to, to a conclusion. To come to a conclusion, this is this yeah. is what, what, what which, which we should do today, you know? Because... Sometimes the story is not in a perfect match with the story happened today or in the time of the Khomeini. So what we will do, you know, like so, like now, Muslims they have different issues. Like, can I buy ice cream? But in the time of Muhammad, there's no ice cream. Right. So they have to match it with something exist in the time of Muhammad and see if it's okay to eat ice cream. So based on the story, which is speaking about something else, we can measure it. This is called actually the the knowledge of measurement, and then you decide. <laughs> how we deal with this issue today right you know yeah so, like so in the time of muhammad muhammad never spoke about taking uh, let us say uh, cocaine because you know, know, you know understand about, what you're saying it's like yeah. thinking that but so but he, so do you do you think that most like practicing muslims in the middle east would agree that that it's all right to have no no sex no no, no. You see, or is no, there's many Muslims they will never agree with anything in Islam. You see, there's the, the Muslims, most of them, they are proud about being Muslim, but they have no idea why they are proud. Well, yeah, the second I know you that. ask them about this, they what they do in order to escape the embarrassment, they say, I don't agree with it, and this is cannot be the prophet saying that, right? You no, know? I know they deny the hadith, yeah, and so, only, only the hadith that suit them at the moment, those are the good hadith. And if it is Muhammad who said that directly, then they will deny it and they will say it is the if or it's weak or rejected, yes. whatever excuse, right? Yeah, I know you that know, it's, 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 like, it's like me when I was applying for a job in certain time, I was looking for a job, and even I apply for it at a taxi driver. If I believe it, <laughs> I have I have master degree. The guy they, they keep saying to me, You're over a qualified. <laughs> 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 I want to. I want to get a job. Just give me a job. Over qualified. So the Muslims they find themselves over qualified to accept such a madness, and they believe that Muhammad cannot do that. So in yeah, order to they have... to keep him in certain uh, uh, height for them, in, so what they do they de they go in denial about facts. It's registered. It's documented. It's even called authentic by their scholars. What I think they don't realize is that the the foundation when they every time they deny their own hadiths and their Sira literature and stuff, they're pulling apart their entire foundation because e either the same people that put those together are the people who put the Quran together and have, I mean, 
they don't have they don't don't have a consistent way of determining they just pick and choose what they like right now actually it, it, you see the one who put the quran actually there's nothing is called quran you know like now you, you see the muslim they say oh, uh, islam is the only religion have a book which is preserved the fact the muslim don't have a single page of the quran not a single page what the muslims they have today according to them if you go if you i don't know if you ever see a quran it says in page number a that this Quran is according to the recitation of recitation of right. and recitation of recitation of recitation of recitation of recitation of all the way to Muhammad okay so the Muslims admit and they agree that they don't have a book they have a recitation of you see when we say yeah. recitation we just admitted that we don't have a book we but, have, but, and, but it's kind of a contradiction because they're also saying that they have a, a material object that's a, a tablet made of stone. They don't have that is who eternal that? with Allah with a uh, book with, with Allah. Yeah, with Allah. Allah, who okay, cares? I mean, you know, when they find that one with Allah, let us know. But the Muslims don't have a single page of their book. If you remember a few years ago, the Muslims, uh, the Muslims, uh, 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 this the like in which university, which. Uh, Birmingham, I think, in England, they they mm -hmm. announced that there is the they found a page which is go in time to the time of Muhammad, but not that not the ink, it was the leather, and the Muslim they right. made a big deal about it, but the fact even that one is not in a perfect match with the Quran today. Uh, not only that, it was dated to before the Quran was supposedly written the Quran. down. Yeah, because this is not really the ink; it was the date of the leather. What what people do, right. because at that time material of writing is very expensive. Only rich people they can afford it. So what they do, they have they, they make they write on leather. So right. I write in it, and then let us say I write some numbers or etc. And then after two years, I don't need those numbers. What I do, I put it in water, I wash it from the ink, and then I write new writing in it. And this is exactly what happened in that piece of leather. So the piece of leather was dated to the before Muhammad, and the verses was written long after. And because right. the Muslim didn't have any manuscript. They found that this page is like big deal. If you have a book, yeah. why are you are happy about this page? Where is the book? It's a page. It's not even two pages. It's one I piece of leather. I just went to a, a conference called the Strong Tower Conference with Jay Smith, and I mean, he, he he's working with um, different scholars on textual criticism of the Quran, and they're destroying it. I mean. The new information that I think he's going to release in November is, uh, I mean, their their manuscript evidence and their textual, I mean, it, it, it's just horrible. They just don't know that. And we, we will see what what uh, what those guys will come with. I saw like uh, I saw there's a guy actually. It's not Jay Smith. There's another guy. Jay Smith is taking from him. He is like doing historian studies about Islam. In the beginning, actually, I did not. Except what he said, that guy, I forgot his name. He's like, as an example, he said, the real Mecca is in Petra, Petra, not in Mecca. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, I, I did not really, I did, I did not really uh, uh, accept what he said because I did listen to Jay Smith and obviously Jay Smith did not present it like in the whole image. He just taken a headline. Right. So I did yeah, not agree with it. But, but then after reason. that, I agree with him. It looked like yeah. that the real Mecca is not what it says in the Quran. We, you know, we don't know. Actually, for me, I don't really care if it's Petra, if it's Mecca, if it's Shish Kebab. It is stupid, and for me, I prefer <laughs> to focus in what the Muslims believe in today, not in something they don't believe in, in order to I destroy just, it. Like one more part of the puzzle of demonstrating, you know, archaeology has never helped Islam. It's destroying it. Yeah, they're those, afraid yeah those guys yelled. those guys they are doing good job i i support them but i'm saying for me for me for them they have different like different method of, the, of fighting this cult right. exposing it but for me i okay the muslim believe in this let us say right. this is not even islam but this is what they believe in so why i want to debate about something they don't believe in let us debate about what they, they believe in I'm... and show them how stupid it is so all of us will I, do good work yeah, at think... the end of the day yeah I think both are good. Both are necessary because I think for for you and helping uh, Muslims leave Islam, the, your 
um, strategy is probably the best. I think preventing Westerners com from converting, having the, uh, that other kind of evidence is really helpful because I don't know. I, I just think they're both important, but obviously you're the Abdul Slayer, so. <laughs> I don't. I, no, I slay Islam. I don't want to say that I do slay. I, I love actually. I love the Muslims. I want to help them. I slay the devil. I am not right. against. I, I'm not against those poor Muslims. I feel sorry for them. I am here to fight the devil and his lies. Uh, and, right. And uh, and uh, and the Muslims are victims of of uh, of uh, of this cult. The same as many other people. You know, I walk in the street. You know, I think you are in America, right? Yes. Okay. Well, we walk in the street in America. We see people. They are. You know, some people were like wearing those black clothes and they have like 1,000 ring in their face and some people <laughs> worship the devil. I mean, people are victims. I feel sorry for them. I don't hate them. Uh, you know, they're, they're a human being can be victim of many cults and many ideas. And in order to help somebody is not by to hate that person, but by trying to help him, to take him out of it. So when I speak to Muslims, I'm not, fighting the Abdul. I mean, yes, I say Abdul, we love some time, but the fact I want the Abdul to be saved. I want them to be free. I don't want them to be slave of anyone. Abdul means slave. Yeah, you I know. Are... And I, I agree. I mean, obviously as Christians that that's what our goal is. I I didn't mean yes. I didn't mean to make I it like you. I understand, I understand, I understand. <laughs> but we have to be careful because people they might think okay, this guy maybe is uh, even using the word slay sound like violence too, you know, because people they will take right. the, the outside of it, but then they will they will play with it. Uh, however, well, I actually have three more questions, so I I, I don't want to take. Can you make your them? Day. Can you make them four and go to heaven? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Well, uh, well, this one is the same kind of category as my first question, which the other thing that I I heard. And I think this was just an imam, maybe it made a thought. Well, I don't know exactly where this comes from, but they said because death does not end your marriage, that it's permissible to have intercourse with your freshly dead wife's body. Yeah, well, this just, is this is yeah, because you see, Muhammad himself, as I told you, Muslims they measure issues they have in their life with and issues have happened in the time of Muhammad. When Fatima bin to Asad, the mother of Ali, she passed away. Muhammad, he <laughs> slept with her in her grave and she was with no clothes and he covered her and he covered himself. Now, uh, 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 the Muslims, they say that he did that in order to light the pressure of the grave on her. All right. Now. Uh, what does that mean? Lighten the pressure of the grave, the torture of the grave, or the what, torture what that and the pressure? Because, like, when they put the, the 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 soil on you, supposedly that will make a pressure, and then Allah He will squeeze the the grave on you. He will torture you, you know. Yep, and then dead. there's a scorpion will come, Hot. and there's yeah. ninety nine uh, a dragon will go inside the anus of the person and that woman. So Muhammad, because Ali is very important person for him. And he wanted to help his mother. So what he do, uh, his mother, she was not really old. She was young. She's beautiful. Muhammad, and Muhammad is an old man. He's, he's already, uh, you know, uh, uh, old man. So Muhammad, when I say old, I'm saying I'm talking about a man. So Muhammad, right. he decided to make something nobody did. And all the Arab, they were wondering, why, what this guy is doing? So he slept with her in her grave. So the, what the Muslim, they do. Okay. A man, he have a wife, and he slept with her after she died. They measure this issue with Muhammad sleeping with a woman. She is not even his wife. The difference is the Muslim, they say, Muhammad, when he slept, he did not really have sex with that woman. He just slept with her. Well, the Muslim, mm -hmm. they say today, will measure to that. If this is a stranger and she is lawful for him to do so because he made it lawful, why a man who, a woman, she is lawful for him, he cannot have sex with his wife even after she died. Why not? I mean, it's a, she is his property. According to Muslims, a woman, she is a property. He paid money to have her, and now he lost her because she is going to be buried in a few hours. So he had the right to use her as long he can use her. And this is why, you know, the, the fatwa, actually the fatwa have more explanation. Uh, the fatwa says, as I remember, that you have up to six or seven hours after the death of the woman to have sex with her. Um. Yeah. 
but yeah, every, yeah. everything have a reason uh, everything have a reason and obviously all the reasons of islam is a failure because it's uh, it's sick it's disgusting it doesn't make sense and uh, for me I, I you know i think it's satanic i mean a man his wife she just die is it time to have sex with her or to be feeling sorry it, sad i mean what what come to your mind to have sex with a dead person yeah <laughs> I, I don't know. You see, you see, <laughs> legally, still she is his wife. We know that, right? He is not really doing like adultery or anything. But even she's, though she's, but she's, but she's wife, dead, but she's dead. She, her, her body is dead. Yeah. And who she is is no longer in her body. So it's the body of his of your wife. It is not who your wife is. You're well, not having sex with your wife. You're having sex. With your wife and their logic, and, and their logic is different. You see, the Quran says in chapter four, verse number thirty-four, because men they spend of their property in the women, they are in charge. So yeah, this man, he, in order to have a wife, he spent a lot of money to to buy her from her family, to pay her, you know, uh, to pay to pay them money. Now he lost his cow. This is <laughs> he have a few hours to use this cow, and he cannot eat her. You know, a cow, maybe he will like, cut her pieces and eat her, but this is a wife. So what he would do, he will use her to the last moment to get his money back. I mean, then apart from the ability to have children, why not just have artificially intelligent sex people in your house? Actually, Muslims are allowed, you know, I, we, we, uh, get, get my get my books. I don't want to speak about those things here. They are really scary. But if you have mm -hmm. my book, you will find the reference where Muslims are allowed to use sex toys like uh, using uh, uh, cucumber or uh, cuc uh, um, what they call it I forgot the name of the uh, um, vegetable in English it's like a cucumber you know or to make a piece of uh, a uh, woman or man uh, women 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 they can use that women, they can, yeah women they can use and men they can use like watermelon you know they make a hole in it and they can uh, or they can use a da or they can use a uh, even a statues or even they can have uh, with a tree anything have a hole, you know, so oh my uh, gosh. Yeah, Because supposedly the Muslim they believe that Islam is a religion of ease and not the religion of making things hard So okay a woman she is horny what she will do She don't have a husband To the point there is a hadith it says in the interpretation of the hadith that if a woman she cut the penis of an animal and she inserted in herself she have to wash so now they are teaching them what you should do after having sex with the penis of an animal she cut it off and now she is using it for sex so after you cut it off now you have to wash what is what make it more important for them is washing uh, is not really what she is doing with the penis you know yeah and muslims they have no problem with reading this actually uh, uh, give me let, let me i don't want to um, i don't know what to say now very embarrassing but let us let me show you something <clears throat> Okay. Uh, somebody uh, sh uh, sent me one of you actually he sent me this link let me get it and put it in the screen uh, this link is a Muslim asking question a Muslim he's asking question let me see is, this guy. You, there's, a, there's a Muslim is calling let me see if he Hello? Hello? Yes. Uh, stop lying. Lying about what, my friend? You're lying everything. Like what? Give, give me one. Right now. Like, like what? Give me one. You need to give me one. Yeah, right now you're lying about that okay, uh, about cucumber. Everything. About what? That woman. Women using cucumber as uh, sex toys and all. Okay, if I show you the, the reference in the front of your eyes, are you willing to read it? Mm, I don't believe in Hadith. Ah, you don't believe in the Hadith? Do you believe in the Quran? Yes. Okay, let us go to the Quran then. Are you ready? <clears throat> Do you promise me you will not hang up? Hello? Hello? Yeah, do you promise me you will not hang up until you read everything? Uh, 
Uh, I I don't know. You believe in the Quran, uh, right? Don't tell me you don't believe in the Quran now. You believe in the Quran, correct? Yeah, but I don't know full Quran, full Quran. No problem. Uh, I will show you. I probably know. This is why I'm here, my friend. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. No problem. Because as you said, I you, come, you said I'm lying, right? So let's see who's lying here. If I show you the same from the Quran, what you would do? I don't trust you. You are your, you, don't you, will like... you don't trust the Quran. This no, Quran? I don't trust. This is Quran. The Quran says that your women is the same as a ground, and you can dig in your ground as you wish, anytime you wish. What do you say? Chapter two, verse number two, two three. Do you accept the Quran or you don't accept the Quran? Uh, there is context, so I will okay, give me the don't... context. No problem. Go with the context. It says here your okay. wife as as a tilth. You know what tilth is? What tilth is? No. Ah, let us search Google. Because it looks like your English is weak, like my English. Both of us now we have funny English. I we should call somebody. Okay. It says his cultivation of land. You know when you when 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 somebody have like a cow and the cow like have a uh, something behind uh, with with the with the steel and they dig in the ground so they make they, they make a cut in the ground in order to put the seed so what your prophet saying your wife is the same as that ground to dig on it is that true do you agree um I will have to ask my imam at the mosque. Okay, ask your imam. I mean, well, who care? They, they, this is now. Can you call your imam live now? While we are talking, put him in the speaker. Let it, we talk three of us. What do you think? <clears throat> so, huh? No, I no. At this time, he might be sleeping. He he might be sleeping. Boy, he's a Zakir Naik now. Where where you live? In Pakistan. Pakistan. Yes. Uh, I live in India. Hmm. Uh, my friend, if you tell him you will give him one kilograms of curry, trust me, he will wake up and he will have no problem to join us. Just tell him I will give you one kilogram of curry for free from a Christian prince. He will be happy. Now answer me. I don't care how you answer. The verse is in the front of you. How the women are the same as a tooth. So dig in the tooth as you wish, anytime you wish, whatever you wish. What does that mean? How you can dig in the women? What exactly you would do? Um, human sex or something the human sex is to dig in the women the women is a ground we dig in it how we can do that what do you dig with do you have a shuffle or something what do you do what do you dig with okay what, what's your point what's your point what do you want to prove you are the one who said to me i'm lying i'm saying i'm showing to you what says in there quran you told me you don't believe in the hadith so i showed the quran now so what i will do now well, I you told me i'm lying Okay, you told me I'm lying. I told you I'm not lying. Okay, you said, show listen, me the proof. I, I said, I said, okay, I will show you the proof. You said, I don't trust you. I said, don't trust me. Don't you trust the Quran? So I showed you the Quran. So now what we would do? Call a friend? Okay, okay let us listen. Mm -hmm. Listen, sir. What about you? Tell me something about Islam, which is something strong, something good. Forget about Christian Prince and all those things he say because he lie, right? He lie. Tell me something truthful about Islam. What, 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 what you want to tell us? How you can convince me that Islam is a true religion. Um, uh, actually, I I like the science of uh, science of Quran. I like it too. Actually, I love it. Tell me one. Tell me one of them. Um, there is lot. There is lots of science. Uh, well, give, me one, give, me I, one, give me one. But don't give me uh, someone like I mean, very strong one because I don't want people to convert to Islam right away. Give me one which is not really too much strong. I don't want people to listen to it and then they convert to, to Islam. So give me one which is will make millions of people if they listen to it convert to Islam right now. I'm listening. Give me one of the science of the Quran. If you watch uh, Zakir Naik, he said about uh, I watch universe. him every day, my friend. Trust me, I watch Zakir Naik every day. This is why I learned about Islam. Zakir Naik is teacher, my teacher. I learned from Zakir Naik that women they will have hur, which I know you're joking. You you uh, you are jealous about him. I know. I'm jealous, very much jealous. I'm trying to grow my beard, actually, like him. And I bought a hat from India, the same exactly as the hat of Zakir Naik. One day I will send you a picture with me and in, in the hat. But now, can you give me one of the science of the Quran? 
Yeah, he proved that uh, one, universe. One? He he proved that universe is expanding in his video, mm. and uh, and lots of people were clapping. You can see uh, on the video. Mm. He proved that the universe is expanding. Well, you know, sadly, this is not what the verse saying. Chapter fifty-one, verse number forty-seven. Are you willing to read for me the interpretation for the verse? Okay, you you mean to say you know more than uh, Zakir Nai? He is a scholar. Yeah, uh, you see, he's not a scholar; he's a potato. Because this is a lie. I can show you all the Muslim interpretation for the verse, and the verse you are talking about, chapter fifty-one, verse number forty-seven. It doesn't say that. He's a liar. Why all Muslim scholars say that this is not what the Quran is saying? Why you Muslim lie? Do you think a Jalalain is a liar? Ibn Abbas. What do you think about Ibn Abbas? He's a liar. Ibn Kathir. What do you think? I mean, why why Muslims are lying? Why Zakir Naik he have a different interpretation from all the Muslim scholars? Who is lying? Either all Muslim scholars are liars, or Zakir Naik is a liar. Choose one. Okay, you tell me uh, uh, why why would he lie? Zakir because Naik. he's a liar. Would... I don't know. He's doing a business. I don't know. You tell me. But I have no idea. You know. Last what, time, what, I, last time I saw really? Zakir Naik, it, it was you know when he was uh, you know selling falafel, and suddenly he became uh, a doctor. Hmm. You tell me, all your scholars, and I challenge anyone to show me one scholar agree with Zakir Naik. Just one. Nowhere it says that. It's a lie. <clears throat> Can you show me one scholar agree with Zakir Naik? I don't remember the name. Okay, actually. see, so the first one it was a failure because we can show you all the interpretation for all the scholars, and they will see they will say that this is a lie, it doesn't mean that. Do you have another scientific miracle? Um, yeah. You see, this is Tafsir at Tabari, this is Tafsir at Tabari proving that Zakir Naik is a liar, and we can prove. More, you know, from other scholars, you can choose anyone. You choose anyone, I will show it to you on the screen in a second. Anyone you wish. Zakir Naik is a big fat liar by, by the proofs and the reference in the front of our eyes. Huh? So, what do we do now? Do you want Al Qurtubi, Al Tabari, Ibn Kathir, Al Baghawi, Ibn Ashur, a Tafsir, a Christian Prince by Christian Prince? Which one you want? All of them they agree that Zakir Naik is a scam and it doesn't say what he said. Okay, first I have to study that. Uh, even. Okay, now give me a different one. Forget about that one. Forget. Give me a different one. This one it was a failure. It did not work. What is the verse which is have science in the Quran? The first one it was hocus focus. Falafel stuff. So which one is the one you think it's strong? Give me one something strong, something solid. Uh, the uh, this round. If uh, what? Uh, the earth is round. The earth is round? Where in the Quran says the earth is round? What chapter? Do you know? I never Nobody. saw I never saw one verse in the Quran says the earth is round. Yeah, but, uh, you also mentioned that in one of his videos. My friend, my friend, can you show me where the Quran says the earth is round? Okay, let us do make a deal. If you show me that the earth is round in the Quran, I will shave my beard, which is like 20 foot, and make it 2 foot long. Can you show me the verse? <clears throat> I will have to look uh, look that up in Google. Okay, but I uh, but I show uh, you know uh, what. Don't don't hang up. Don't hang up. I will give you time. Go and search right now as we speak. Search in Google where in the Quran it says the earth is round. Just give me the verse, and I will show it on the screen, and we will see if it is true or not. What do you think? Good idea. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Don't hang up. I'm I'm going to be listening to you. I will I will put you, uh, in, you know, like uh, in in hold, and uh, when you are ready, just say hi. I'm here. I found it. It's going to take you two seconds actually. There's many uh, Islamic website. They will help you. Guys, invite your friends, please, because our friend here, Mr. Islam, is going to show us that the Earth is round in the Quran, and this is an amazing discovery. Nobody knows about it for 300 years ago. Please get ready. Bring your popcorn, and you will see an amazing scientific discovery. No one spoke about it before okay but you I, i'm sure you know about that uh, this verse 
my friend just give it to me. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe you are talking about a different one. How I know? I mean, you tell me. Tell me. Okay, search in Google. I'm. I know that you know uh, world, uh, world religion. So you should know. My friend, I am learning from you. Actually, to be honest with you, ninety nine point nine percent of my knowledge about Islam is either coming from Zakir Naik <coughs> or from Zakir Naik. So, my friend, you know, please help me. Which verse is the one saying the earth is round? Search in Google just to be sure this is the verse you are talking about. What if I thought different verse and I'm wrong? How I can escape the judgment of Allah then by making wrong? We cannot do that. Give me the verse. Search it. Okay. Okay, wait, let me search. Please invite your friends. Okay, uh, I will uh, give you the link if you want to read. Oh, it's a link. Can you read it for us from there? Just read it, read it. I don't open links because you know it might have a virus. Last time I okay. open, I open a link. Jibril, he came to me. Okay, Quran seventy-one uh, verse ninety, Eesh. chapter. I wish you did not mention that verse because this is Quran what? Uh, 71? 71, 19. Man. I mean, this is really one of the most strong verses in the Quran which it says the earth is round. Now, let me ask you, uh, Brother Abdul, are you sure that this verse is saying that? Um, are you sure it says that the earth there is a flat? Um, no, not not flat. Uh, uh, around, I'm not sure. Around, round, uh, round, 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 sorry, yeah. round. But my friend, there it says it's flat. Are you reading from a Christian website or Muslim website? Abdul, uh, I, I think no. you are reading from a Christian website because this is a verse saying the earth is a flat, my friend. No. It's saying uh, Allah made the earth for you as a carpet spread out. Okay, carpet is round. Have you ever heard of a carpet is round? No, actually, I uh, no, 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 not this one. Sorry. Ah, uh, see, I told you this is a Christian website, my friend. Quote for me from Zakirnaik website. Yeah. Are you quoting the wrong actually, one? You just approve yourself now wrong. You just quote for the people the verse where it says the earth is like carpet. Allah make it like carpet. How you can fix that now? My friend, next time, just text me, text me. Don't say it so people will not hear you. Now people, they heard you. Chapter 71, verse number 19. It okay, says that please, Allah, he made the earth as a carpet, and you are the one who gave us the word carpet. So you just made the opposite, brother. Don't do this mistake. The Christians will laugh at us now. It says Allah, he made the earth okay. like a carpet. It's a flat. How how Allah, he, okay. he say that? Okay, okay. listen, this uh, translation may be wrong. I, I don't know. Ah, translations are wrong. We can go to the interpretation. Do you like to go to the interpretation? No. Uh -huh. Translation uh, is wrong. Interpretation is wrong. Okay. Obviously, it's conspiracy against Islam, my friend. The Muslim translators, they are making conspiracy against the Prophet. And the Muslim interpreter scholars, they are against Islam and they are saying the earth, Allah, he made it flat. I mean, disgusting. Christians against Islam, Muslims against Islam, scars against Islam, sheikhs against Islam, Muhammad is against Islam. I mean, who's with Islam? Are you with Islam or you are against? Mm, I'm not educated at this religion. I'm not educated too. Ah, you are not educated about this religion. Are you a Muslim? No, I'm not a uh, full Muslim. I mean, You're a half I'm... Muslim. Guy, this guy is not a full Muslim, he's a half Muslim. Which part of you is a Muslim, the top or the bottom? What do you mean you are not a full Muslim? I mean, uh, I'm, I, I do mean, uh, I can't uh, leave, what? leave. Put me in, uh, my friend. Okay. Okay. okay, wait, wait. Let me uh, ask you a question. And I want your honest, honest please, answer. Please promise me you do not ask me something very strong. Because I'm weak and I, I'm out of the glue. Last time a Muslim like you, he asked me a question. I spent like two months to glue myself together. So please don't make it all. Go ahead. Okay, so... No uh, way. You, are you saying uh, that? No, no, no. I can no, answer no. this. This is a very, very strong question. You have. I, we agreed to make it easier. 
How I can Let answer this? Have... This is so strong. Not... I, sorry, I cannot answer this. It's so 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 much. This is bigger than my salary. You're not you're not let not even letting me ask you question. Ah, I thought you asked the question. Sorry, because I'm I'm scared. So I thought this is a question. Okay, what the question was? Okay, so I know me. I know you're living in uh, Christian country. I li so I'm maybe... leaving. Yeah, I'm leaving there. Yeah. Okay, so just for uh, just for this, uh, let's assume that uh, some part of in some uh, some part of Bible is wrong, mm. and you even you know that, mm. and you want to leave Christianity, mm. but uh, you're living in Christian country. Mm. How will you leave? Means really are you not of your life? Just now, I can say I'm not a Christian no more, and that's it. There's no, there's no way to do anything. Nobody will kill me, and nobody will do anything. There is many atheists in this country. There's people who don't want to be Christian. There's people who don't want to, they are Hindus. There's people, it's a free country. You can be whatever you want. This is not Pakistan, my friend. I thought you would ask me something difficult, my friend. I mean, this is, okay, now, let's go back to the uh, uh, Quran and science. Did you find another verse in the Quran speaking about science in the Quran? Anything strong? I, I will have to look for more. Mm, okay. Let me uh, let me ask you. What is the best thing you found in the Quran? Like something you find it's so so good. Did you find something very good in the Quran? Um, actually, I don't remember. You know, I from when I when my when I was born from them from that time I was Muslim. So, hmm. uh, I mean, you can say that uh, I'm I I don't fully believe in. Do you have religion. a chicken at home? Muhammad, what do you have a chicken at home? Chicken, yeah. Uh, you mean Allah or that? Yeah, I, I mean, meat. do you have a chicken? Meat or, uh, do you have any birds at home in your house? Do you have any birds? You mean as a, as a pet or something? Yeah, yeah, a bird like a pet. Or do you have anything like a duck or chicken? Or do you have anything? No, okay. Have you have you if, if somebody told you that I have a chicken and I made my chicken a minister, what do you think about it? That's stupid. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, do you want to call a friend before you say I'm sure? Uh I, I can't at this time, everyone is okay. So you are sure that anyone he say a chicken became a minister. That is a stupid, but this is what the Quran said. The Quran speak about a bird who was a minister of irrigation for uh, Sulaiman. And this is the bird in front of us. Here we go, it's in front of our eyes. Beautiful bird, but this guy, obviously, he have a high rank in Islam. He, uh, he was a minister. What do you say? Are you there? Okay, man. Yeah, uh, maybe uh, I there is some context you have to read. Uh, context, uh, what good context? It says there that the Prophet Solomon he was is in, doing inspection over his ministers and he found that this bird is gone. And he said, If he did not give me a reason, I will slaughter him. Imagine you have a chicken and your chicken is a minister in your government and he is absent. What do you do yourself? Okay. What are, uh, why you are laughing? I mean, you are a Muslim. Are you laughing at yourself? What I mean, this is Islam, my friend. No. What I do? I mean, come on, show respect, no, my friend. No, I'm, no, I'm not laughing about this. I'm laughing about something. Ah, else. you are not like. Come on, don't say you are not laughing. We heard you. Obviously, you are laughing about the stupidity of Islam. You cannot resist. No, you could not no, resist. Everybody heard you. Everybody heard. Everybody heard you. No. Okay, no. you are not laughing, but you are the one who said whoever believe in this is a stupid. Did you I say that? Say there is a, My friend, did uh, you yes, say but, did you say this is stupid or not? You said that. But but the, there is some context, so you have to read it. What uh, context? The, the guy, this guy, this minister, he was a minister of irrigation and he was in charge of finding women who have no hair in their legs. Do you like women with their hair in their legs? Hello? Yes. Yes. You like women with their hair in their legs? That's weird. I don't. I mean, that's okay. Anyway, this guy, this this bird, look how beautiful he is. 
Look how beautiful, mashallah. Okay, so uh, what's the point? What's the point? You know I mean? The what point is, is Islam yeah. is a stupid religion, my friend. How in the world? Look, it says here, even the Muslims in their in their post, they says, "Suwar li tayri Sulaiman al Hudhud." All the Muslims believe that this is the minister of a prophet Solomon, who went to look for women who have no hair in their legs, and he found women. Her name is Balqis, which means the queen of Sheba. So what do you say about this? And you are the one who said whoever believe in this is stupid. Are you willing to leave Islam, my friend? Yeah, but uh, no. So, no, Islam. no. Guys, he say he say he will be, he will leave Islam. Thank you very no, much. That's no, wonderful. No, oh, no, come no, on! You no. said that. You said that. Everybody heard you. Either you believe now in this bird to be a minister, or you leave Islam. Do you believe? Either you say yes, I believe is a minister, or you say I will leave Islam. I mean, there's no choice. I I think you already know the answer. What what no, is the answer? You, you believe in this guy is a minister? No, I already told you that I okay, I so, was born. So you, was so, born so, you, so you decided that Islam is a stupid religion? Did you decide already? Um, I can't say that you well, know. Where a I... second ago, you told me, come on, uh, Islam, come on. You told me a second ago. I said to you, do you believe in this? He said to me, this is just stupid. You said this is stupid. Are you? Am, am I lying? Did you say to me this is stupid or not? Yes. Okay. Are you but saying Muhammad I... is stupid now? Are you saying Allah is stupid? Okay, listen. But I I don't know full uh, this this uh, Quran. So I. My friend, to... no problem. We we are here together. Me and you, we can read it together. Do you want me to go to the interpretation for the verse? We can do that. What do you think? No, I... Why yeah, no? Because... Why, why why no? Why no? Why no? Why you are keep saying no? What is the problem? We can go right now. Chapter twenty seven, verse number twenty, and we can read the interpretation. Okay, give me a second. Let us do it. Here we go. This is Tafsir, and this is Tafsir Ibn Kathir. I think you like Ibn Kathir. All people from Pakistan they like Ibn Kathir. You know, I I, I learned that in Pakistan they like three things in the world: Prophet Muhammad, and Curry, and Ibn Kathir. So if we go here to read this chapter. Uh, okay, before you answer before this, before let now, yeah, just, let just wait, my friend. Let us, wait, let us see. Let, let, us, let us see what Ibn Kathir is saying, my friend. Come on, let us, let us focus together. Ibn Kathir so, this, is Ibn Kathir a Muslim or he is a, a, a Zakir Naik? He's not Zakir Naik. No. This is a scholar. No, let me ask you, who is Ibn Kathir? Ibn Kathir is the son of Kathir. Ibn means the son of his father is Kathir. He is the son of Kathir. I think it's obvious, right? So Don't why tell me you know who is his father? Okay. So exactly. So we don't know. Uh, he's, uh, he's you know, he's a scholar. He's a right? scholar. You Muslim, you agree that he's a scholar. He is a very well-known Muslim scholar. His name is Ibn Kathir. He have many books. So don't tell me who's but, Ibn, who is uh, who is Kathir, Ibn Kathir. Who is Muhammad? But, but, okay. Okay. Well, let me ask you. Who is Muhammad? Uh, he's a prophet. No. No. Who is he? Son of who? Uh, Abdullah. Okay, how his father is named slave of Allah, but he don't believe in Allah. Uh, uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, here we go. So yeah, it, this is not the father name of Muhammad. In Arabia, if somebody is unknown, they say to, to they say he is a slave of Allah. As simple as that. A slave of Allah, it's mean unknown. John Doe. So Allah. So, so Allah was my friend, my friend. Muhammad Islam. is a son of no one. Now, who is Ibn Kathir? Is your business? You can search it in, in Wikipedia or Wika Islam or Wika Chicken, and you will find who is Ibn Kathir. However, here it says that uh, uh, Prophet Solomon he checked his ministers and he found that the hood hood is missing. What do you say? And Suleiman said, mean? What is the matter that I not see the hoopoo? Or he is among the absence, Suleiman, the Prophet Suleiman, every day he count all the chickens and the birds he have. Every day in the morning he go and they salute him. And they call their name by number like, Sir, yes, sir. Drill sergeant, yes, sir. You know, soldier, you know, specialist, you know, uh, officer, blah, blah, blah. So all the birds are, they are in the army of Suleiman. Have you ever heard of an army full of birds? I mean, a king have an army of birds and a human and okay. genie. What do you think okay, about let, that? Okay, let me uh, ask you one question. 
uh, uh, does uh, no, priest why? in your church they lie or they they ever lie priest in, in your the church. church they lie no no does the pre, uh, priest in your church do they ever lie or something yeah there is many they, there is many priests they lie i will give you a name one of them his name is muhammad he claimed to be a priest i, I can show no. you from the quran no I, i no actually my uh, intention is not that i want to uh, you know uh, criticize christian that my question was something else you know like like, like for example uh, priest uh, priest in church they never like means for example they never lie about their religion because they believe in can you speak slower so, I mean, like, my friend i don't understand anything now you are speaking so hard i mean it's a faster and they are speaking now i don't know this is urdu what do you want to say what do you want to say to me about the the church what what do you want to say Our church okay. is my friend. The church is a place where people goes. There's bad. There's good. There's good okay. people, people. There's bad no, people. No, there's a priest who can not, be a filthy man. No. There's a man no, who listen. can be a good man. So what is the question? No, listen to me. Uh, in church, I am. I'm sure that mo- most priests will never lie about their religion, right? I mean, they will. I don't know. There, there's it, uh, there's some they lie. There's, they, but who cares? I mean, this is their business. If they lie. We expose them. If somebody lie, we get him busted. If a priest he says I have an army of a chicken, I will get him busted. It doesn't matter if his name is a pri- the priest. His name is John or his name is Muhammad. Now, why you are changing the topic, my friend? Okay, so uh, why okay, why you don't want to talk about the army of the chickens? Why? I mean, uh-huh. is, it, is it embarrassing? Uh-huh. Have you? Ha- uh-huh. What do you think about a guy? He claim he is an is a prophet, and he is a king, and he have an army of ducks. No. Uh, d- uh, did you? Uh, d- uh, did your parent ever lie to you? What? Never, right? What? Did your parent ever lie to you? Parents, parents. I don't know. Did your parents, I never know. Like, I don't know if they lie to me. I don't know. No, I'm sure they will never. Okay, lie to I you think before. I think my grandma once she lied to me. I asked her where I came from. She said to me, "Santa Claus, he dropped you in the chimney." Okay, and later are, I found that this is not true. It was Santa no, Claus who dropped stuff. me in the kitchen, not in the chimney. What does have to do okay, with our did, topic, my friend? I'm asking you. Talk, did, are you saying Allah is a liar? No, no. The point is that. Uh, why would my parents lie about this religion? You know, if uh, if it is not uh, no, your your parents is not lying to you. Your parents are ignorant. They they learn false information. They think it's true. I don't want to insult your parents, my friend. Your parents are good people. This is not my topic. I'm talking about Islam and what Islam teach. I don't want to talk about your parents and my parents. If my parents and your parents they sit together, they will make a nice rice with curry and they will enjoy their time. This is not our business now. Leave them alone. Look at this. We have a prophet. His name is Muhammad. He claiming that there's a prophet from his religion. His name is Solomon. He have an army of a chicken, an Actually, army Solomon of genie. Solomon is also a prophet in Bible. Huh? So, huh? Solomon yeah. is also uh, is there in Bible. So it is not only in, uh, in the Bible. Quran. Okay. How come the the Solomon in the Bible he don't have an army of a chicken? If we are talking about the same prophet. Why this prophet here have a chicken army and ducks army and hood hood army, but the one in the Bible don't have that? Why is that? I don't know. I have to uh, study about it. So. Okay, now we go to zero. Do you think really that Solomon he have an army of birds? Be honest with me. No. Okay, so the Quran, are you saying the Quran is lying? Uh, again, I have to. I'm. I have to read everything. So I. What do I, you can't say, I can't say. My friend, okay. It, uh, I, I will show you. I'm here to show you. I am here to show you. Don't tell me I will read everything. But and I notice every time I show you something, you said, yeah. you know, I don't want. You know, to, I don't know. You don't want to read it. Don't tell me I need to read. I'm showing you. Is it, I, I'm. I'm not showing you on the screen. In the same chapter, actually, it says that Suleiman. You have a flying carpet. Have you ever seen a flying carpet of Alibaba? I'm serious. Did yeah. you see a flying carpet? Do you believe no. in a flying carpet? You don't believe in it? Okay, what if I show you in the Quran that Suleiman have a flying I, carpet? I saw in one of your videos. I know about what you're... Okay, so uh, you know. Okay, what do you think about the Quran saying that Suleiman, he have a flying carpet? I think maybe... Uh, Muhammad got possessed, so he he got wrong words from Satan. So wrong what what wrong what 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 wrong wrong words? It says, "What is Suleiman al-Rihu Asifa?" 
And they, no, no. if we go and read the interpretation, no. it says it clearly no. that Suleiman no, he have a flying carpet. It can carry all the equipment of his army. Chapter twenty-one, verse number eighty-one. Do you like me to show let, it to you? Let me let me answer you. Sure. I think what is happening is uh, what why this uh, what is happening is that Muhammad got possessed, so okay. he got he got he got some wrong words from Satan. So so are you saying these verses are from Satan? He's the one stupid one. He's saying those stupid lies. Yeah, Allah is Allah has not said this. He's uh, said. Uh, you know what? Now I know. I thought you. you uh, thank you for helping me. I thought this is. Uh, you know, I, now we know why they are stupid. Those verses. This is Shaitan. Shaitan yes. put in the mouth of the Prophet those verses, which is stupid. And uh, now people they think it is Muhammad who is saying stupid things and doing stupid things. But the fact those are satanic verses. But my friend. The Muslims they say the Quran says Allah Allah took off those verses. They are not in the Quran no more. Okay, did I say my name or something? No. I mean, I don't want my name to. I mean, I did not uh, say your name. No, don't. I did not say your name. I did okay. not say your name. No, I, the only name I, they knew about you that your name is Abdul. Don't worry. Okay, please don't uh, mention my name. No, 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 your name. I will not say that your name is Muhammad Adnan. Don't worry. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so now, uh, do you see in the front of me? It says that Allah, He He gave uh, Suleiman, He gave Dawood, He had David and Suleiman. They gave him amazing the kingdom. And uh, like here it says, وسخرنا مع داود الجبال يسبحنا الطير. And here it says. That he have, he even command uh, a carpet, and the carpet fly. What do you say about this? Look at this. This is Suleiman now, and to Suleiman we subjected the wind strongly. <coughs> right. Uh, actually, we subjected the strong wind to Suleiman, and then he says here. <coughs> And of everything we have, all, uh, we have all uh, all knower. So Allah, He knows everything. Let us see the knowledge of Allah. He said that Suleiman he had a mat made of wood, which means a carpet made of wood, in which he would place all the equipments of his kingship: horses, camels, tents, troops. Then he would command the wind to carry it, and then he would go underneath it and it would carry him aloft shading him and protecting him from the heat so look this flying carpet can carry all the army of Suleiman horses animals tents uh, uh, chickens everything what do you think um, I, um, I, uh, and, um, it is honestly I I don't know what to say hmm. Do you wish to have a flying carpet like this? Be honest with me, Muhammad Adnan. Um, I, so, uh, okay, I agree that there is some stupid, uh, stupid things in Quran. So, uh, so I, I already gave you explanation that it is possible that uh, Muhammad got possessed. So this is verse. This verse is coming from Satan. Mm. So. It's possible. So this is the whole chapter. Look like the whole chapter is uh, is from the devil. Not only this verse, because this chapter here is full of crazy stuff. Yeah, it is possible. Yeah. Mm, okay. How we can solve this problem now, Muhammad Adnan? What we should do now? We should like burn these pages in the Quran. What we should do? Because obviously, now people they are laughing at Islam, but they should not do that because obviously those are from the Shaitan. Those are satanic verses, ch satanic chapters. So what we should okay. do? Do you have a solution? Uh, okay. So why 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 so, so many people believe in uh, Quran? You have, have to be stupid. I mean, don't you see that? You just yourself. You said this is stupid. You said that, right? So how do they believe in the Quran? They have to be stupid to believe in this. Oh no! I, I said stupid because it is. Uh, it may be from Satan, so we don't know. Okay, but I mean. You you agree and I agree that this is stupid. You are the one who told me who believed that in the army of Suleiman there's a chickens and birds. He must yes, be stupid. Yes. You said that, okay. And now you, you said that the one who believe in flying carpet is stupid too. 
So now, but okay. I, so it, what we will no, do but, now? No, I I said it is stupid because it came from Satan, not from Allah, okay. not from Allah. So it's okay. But how how you know it's not from Allah because it's stupid, right? You are saying because it's stupid. I don't agree. It it is from Allah, but there's no proof that it's not from Allah. You are just trying to save the ass of Allah, saying that this is stupid, and by saying that, Allah will be saved. So Allah cannot make such a stupid thing. Hello, okay. But there is a proof. Can you prove to me that it's not Allah who's saying that? All the Muslims agree that the Quran is the book of Allah, and that's it. Prove to me that this is the one who said that is shaitan. Prove it. <laughs> Do you have a proof? Uh -huh. Actually, you know that God will never make mistakes. So. Yeah, that God is don't, a God don't mistake, but God make it platforming flying carpet. He make the flying carpet, and as you see, they work. They can carry I, the whole kingdom of Suleiman, even the chickens. Even actually, if you go and read more, it says that he put in the top of the flying carpet six hundred thousand chair. Do you, let, let me ask you, uh, Muhammad Adnan, did you ever do snorkeling or diving? Yeah. Have you ever seen of a genie he dived to bring you diamonds? Okay, uh, no, no, uh, no, I, uh, the, uh, we are going off topic. So, no, no, this is the uh, same topic. The same topic in the same chapter it says that Suleiman he have shaitan who died for him to get him rubies and diamonds. Okay. What do you okay, say? Okay, I agree. Yeah, this is uh, stupid. So, this what is stupid did we point now? Okay, so now we have more stupid things. I mean, this this Quran is full of stupid things. What we would do now? Each time we read something, we find it stupid. So look what what the Quran is saying. That Suleiman, no. we have Shaitan who died for him to get him rubies and jewelries and diamonds and even iPad. And then no, after no, they come from the ocean, they come back from the ocean. Do you know what Suleiman he did to them? Do you know? Uh, no, I, he put no, them in uh, the chains after they come back from the water right away when the shaitan come from the water so the man he grabbed him he put him in the chain because he might run makes sense so look at this and also the shayateen every kind of builder imagine imagine Suleiman, according to the quran he have a corporation all the employees in that corporation are shayateen the supervisor is a shaitan the builder is a shaitan the guy who do the concrete is shaitan. The guy who do the plumbing is shaitan. The guy who work in the tiles is shaitan. The one who do uh, the watering for the concrete is shaitan. The one who do what else, guys? What we do? The one who installed the kitchen is shaitan. All the employees are shaitan. They are the builders for him. Have you ever heard of such a thing that there is a prophet? All his employees are shaitan. No. Well, I want you to say. Agree then that Islam is a stupid religion. Just say it. I mean, no, not, not all that? Islam. No, Islam is a stupid religion. You agree that this is stupid. I'm talking, this is what in front of you. This is Islam, my friend. So, why no, you don't agree? No, not, my friend, this, I is, this, say, is Quran. No, this, is Quran. this is Quran, my friend. Quran saying that. So, for, for how long you will deny the truth that this is a stupid? But, but I already told you that it may be some Satan. So, we don't know, my friend. You can say whatever you want, but this is what is written in the Quran. Do you have a proof that this is not Allah speaking? All the Muslims believe that this is Allah speaking. All the Muslims. You are the only one trying to protect Islam from the stupidity and saying to us, the screen is black. Why the screen is black? Uh, maybe the connection is weak. Okay, hold on. What? No, the people, they told me that they cannot see my screen. I think because of the oh. black magic, I think, you know, black magic, somebody doing black magic here. Do you believe in black magic? Uh, I know where you're going. Do you believe in black magic? Be honest with me. I know where, I know where, it, where you are going with this. Where, you I'm, will going, where I'm going talk about this, what do you think? Where, 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 I'm, where I'm going with this? You will talk about the story of Muhammad uh, getting uh, uh, black magic. Right. Okay, but do you believe in black magic? This is not, uh, I'm not talking about Muhammad now. I'm talking, do you believe in black magic? Um, uh, I don't know. Maybe yes. Yes, okay. yes. I do. Okay, you know, uh, my friend, uh, for some reason, my screen is not showing. I don't know why uh, we lost the screen. So uh, I, I have to say to you, thank you for today. Maybe you can call me tomorrow. Tomorrow we will do podcast mostly. 
call me and I, I really I like talking to you because I learned a lot from you especially I learned that the Quran obviously is coming from Satan and everybody heard you saying that and I have to agree Quran is full of satanic verses thank you very much for calling mr. Muhammad and if you don't want me to say your name in Skype my friend change your name there you can go to the profile and do editing and you see I just I I, I, I did not tell them that your name is Muhammad Adnan nobody knows just this is you know so go to your profile yeah. and change your name there in the editing and make it like a name don't name yourself again Muhammad Adnan so people will not know who you are and uh, uh, for me I, I don't want to tell them that your name is Muhammad Adnan that's why I didn't say your name okay yeah. but go to your profile and change it yeah I will do that now right. thank you thank you very much Muhammad Adnan thank you for calling bye bye All right, guys. I don't know. Like uh, the screen is not working, uh, but <clears throat> what we can do? Let us see. I will try again to share the screen. Obviously, it's a black magic thing. Still, the screen is not coming for you. Not coming, right? Yeah, sadly, it's not working. I don't know what to do. Anyway, guys, I think we have enough for today. Like, we are already for a few hours here. And really, I need to walk a little bit because uh, uh, my knee hurt from sitting all those hours. Uh, I want to say thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. At the same time, I say to the Muslims, I don't hate you. And I'm not making fun of you. I'm making fun of the stupid religion. It's called Islam. You are not my enemy. I would like to be a friend for everyone in this earth, not only Christians, Hindus, Buddhas. I would like and I would love to have Muslims to be my friend. But Islam is forbidding you to be my friend. The problem is Islam, not me. I like to be a friend with you. And I like to share with you the truth. And I want you to see what I see in your eyes, not in my eyes. Which means I want you to see with your own understanding you find out, you think, you search, you study. I help you, but you check it out. If this is true, then how you believe in this garbage? The same as what happened with our friend here who called me. He keep calling me liar. And then he admit that the Quran is the book of the devil. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. And until we see you tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be around the same time, around 3.30 mostly. So be with us tomorrow. May the Lord bless you all. And as always, we say, Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And we see you soon again. God is willing. Thank you very much.